Hi, I'm Lisa Marie. If you are new, welcome to my channel. If you are returning, thank you so much. If you want to craft your best life along with me, let's get started right now. This DIY, I've got this adorable ornament from Hobby Lobby, the nativity scene. Actually, it's beautiful. And the letters J-O-Y from Hobby Lobby as well. What I'm going to do, first of all, is remove all the stickers in the little plastic thing. I'm gonna use my heat tool from Amazon to do that. And that just loosens up the glue. It makes it much easier to get everything off and really fast too. If I mention that I got something at Amazon, there will be a link in my description box for my Amazon store and you can find it there if it's something that you need to. Now you might be saying, Lisa, why are you painting white over white? Well, these letters were almost like shiny and I wanted the white chalk paint to kind of just dull it down a little bit, you know, if that makes sense. So I just used my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. Now I'm going to hot glue my beautiful ornament right over the top of the O. And I just think it's the perfect fit right there. I think it looks so cute. This could be the end right here if I wanted, but you know me, that's not the end. So I'm just gonna reinforce with some extra hot glue in the back to make sure it stays in place because I don't want anything falling out of this thing. Now I'm gonna take my white chalk paint again and I'm just gonna dry brush kind of heavily over the nativity scene. I just wanted it to have that really pretty whitewash distress look. Then I'm gonna take that laser cut star that I got and I'm just gonna dry brush that as well on both sides and then I'm gonna hot glue that right to the top where that hole is because there should be a star on a nativity scene. I'm not sure, you know, it's, a, it's an ornament so it didn't have one but we fixed that, now we got it. And that looks so cute the way it is, but I've got this little sign. I got it years ago. It's like a palette sign and it's got these little clips on it, which I took a screwdriver and removed. And I'm going to use it as the base for my letters because I just thought that would make it really cute. And I wouldn't have to worry about how they would hang or how I would connect them. And I'm just gonna hot glue each of the letters right on there. And that is it. This was so easy and it's just beautiful. And of course there's joy in the Savior's birth. That's the whole reason we celebrate Christmas right there is that the Savior was born. And I love that this is what this sign represents. And I love that it's gonna be in my home for everyone to see that I celebrate the birth of the Savior. I just can't think of anything more joyful. If you are enjoying this video, stop what you're doing right now and hit that like button. It really helps YouTube to show my video to more people and I really appreciate it. Thanks. I am very excited about this DIY. I've got this little cutting board from Dollar Tree and these little knobs that I got at Hobby Lobby and then I prepared a bunch of Cricut transfers. If you don't have a Cricut, you can use stickers, use your hand lettering, or you can just trace words from the computer. I'm gonna measure and try to find the middle of the shorter sides and then about, um, oh, an inch in roughly. And that's where I'm going to drill holes to put my little handles on. And I'm just gonna get my drill out and find the right drill bit and I'm gonna put, put a piece of wood underneath so I don't go through my table, but I'm not even gonna go all the way through the cutting board. What I'm actually gonna do is take a couple of little skewer sticks and cut them into really small pieces and I'm gonna hot glue it into that hole and then hot glue the other side of it into the little knob and that is gonna make a really nice connection because the only screws I have for this are too long or too thick and I don't wanna shatter the little cutting board. So this is a solution that I have decided is gonna work the best and in fact, it really does. So I'm just trimming down the little skewers. I got those at Dollar Tree, I always keep them around. And then I'm gonna make sure that once I get it in the hole and in the bottom of the little knob that it hits exactly flat on the cutting board. So you'll see, I'm gonna do it uh, on both sides and I'm just gonna get that hot glue right in the hole. Stick the skewer in, I'm gonna put the other skewer in, do the same thing. And then on each knob, I'm gonna put a bunch of hot glue inside and around that base. And then I'm gonna just put it right over the top of the skewer into the hole 
and once it's sealed with the hot glue that's in there really good and i don't think i'll be putting anything heavy on this anyway now what i cut out were all the different names of god now there's more than what i cut out but i just ran out of room and i did all different fonts for each one so if you're not going to use a cutting machine you could use stickers in all different fonts you could write in different styles or you could trace the words from a piece of paper that you print different fonts off the computer and that would be super easy to do and I'm not going to show every single one that I put on because it would take a really long time because I was playing around with where I was going to place them. And so I'll show you every so often when I've gotten some more on. So you're going to see this first one go on. And then after that, you'll just see me as I get more and more on. And here we are, I've got a bunch on, doing them in different directions, different fonts. I'm already loving the way this looks. I put Son of God right in the middle. And there's some more that I've added. I just love the way it looks when you do different fonts. It makes it so interesting. And now it's done. Tell me that isn't just amazing. I love it, you guys. I'm gonna take eight of the little towering, tower, tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna E6000 and hot glue two together for each of the four corners. And then I will do the same thing to attach it to the cutting board itself. And that will be the little legs, and this is a riser. Um, you could put things on it. I haven't put any Mod Podge on it yet, but I do have a dishwasher safe. So in the event that I wanted to put something that's food related, I could. Right now I wouldn't because I haven't done that yet. Right now it's more decorative than anything else. And let me tell you, I am in love with this. It's, it might be my favorite one from today. I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm thinking it could be. It was so easy. I mean, it was time consuming to print out all of the words and choose the fonts, but it's so worth it because when I look at this, I just love it. It reminds me who Jesus is, what he is to us, and he was born to be all of those things. And again, that's the real reason for the season. I love when a project is really beautiful and easy. I got this really sweet nativity stand from Dollar General for $3. And then I've just got that painter stir stick and something else I printed out for my Cricut. I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint and I'm gonna paint the base that it, where it isn't already white, I'm gonna paint it white. And then I decided I'm gonna paint the whole back white as well, just to give it a more finished look since I'm gonna use so much of it as it is. There it is with the back painted now. And then I'm gonna take my gold Arteza paint marker and I'm gonna go over the star because it did have some gold on it, but I painted it white. I didn't like the way they did it. And then after I did this, I wasn't sure if I liked this. So then I took my brushed metal folk art paint that I got from Plaid and I decided that I would go over that. And I think that makes the gold on the star look better. I don't know. I just like it better now than when I put the paint marker, even though I love the paint marker. I have another laser cut star here and this time I'm just gonna put it on as is. I'm gonna hot glue it right over the star because there was glitter there and I wanna cover up that section. And this just adds so much dimension and I love it. I'm gonna take the paint stir stick and I had already measured, just wanna make sure that it fits right across the top there because that's where I'm gonna put my little sign. And these are my miter shears from Amazon. They are the best things ever. Oh gosh, especially for paint stir sticks and things that are small like this, it just goes through them and I love it. And then I'm gonna sand with my sanding block from Dollar tree not just the ends but all around and on the front and back as well you gonna use that white, white linen chalk paint again I'm gonna paint everything on that little sign and then I'll lightly sand it just to keep it nice and smooth because I am gonna put a little transfer on it I printed this out from the Cricut and it just says Jesus is the gift that perfectly fits I think it says every heart and I love that it's so true so true and uh so i'm just going to put that right on there oh perfectly fits the size of every heart there you go and it's a great reminder and here's this little baby in a manger who's really god of the universe oh my gosh it's amazing it is truly amazing and i love really focusing on you know what this is all about yes presents are nice decorations are nice we love to make them but you can't forget what the real reason for the season is and that is jesus without that there would not be a christmas there wouldn't be a lot of things so i I'm so grateful and boy does our world need this now more than ever uh man can i get an amen <laughs> i'm sure someone out there could say amen to that 
Now I am just going ahead and pulling off my transfer tape and then I'm gonna take this little sign and I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over it. Part of the reason is I had to fix my little eye on the word gift and I didn't want it to go anywhere. If you are enjoying anything about this video, please hit the like button. I would appreciate it. Now I'm gonna hot glue right onto the front where I know it's gonna be sitting because I had already measured and then across that top part. And I'm gonna go ahead and just set it right on there and press firmly and this one is done. Super easy, beautiful, very meaningful. Now, I have a question. Do you call it nativity or a creche? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video and this is your kind of thing, then definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you can become part of my YouTube family and you'll always be notified when my next video goes live. Now, this ornament is super easy. I am using this um, ornament from the Dollar Tree and this little person from Hobby Lobby and a piece of a drop cloth. And then also some, uh, it's a hula skirt I chopped up. And what I'm gonna do is take the burnt umber and mix it with some water. I'm gonna spray the little baby. I'm calling this the baby Jesus now. I'm going to paint it with the burn number because it will make it just a brown skinned little baby, which I do believe that Jesus was brown skinned being where he came from. And I am going to cut up this little drop cloth. I'm going to make it like a little, like when you wrap up a baby. I'm going to hot glue it to the little baby Jesus and wrap him up. But I'm using the hot glue. Of course, you wouldn't hot glue a baby, right? <laughs> So now I'm gonna wrap this around the little baby Jesus and just get him all snuggled in there because I just want him to look like he's swaddled. And I could have used a cute little white wrap or something like that, but I thought this seemed more authentic. I mean, he was born in a manger after all. I'm sure whatever they had wasn't really fancy. So I wanted this to look kind of worn and tattered. You know, like that's his humble beginnings, you know? There he is, how adorable. And then I'm gonna paint the top of this little ornament cap with that brushed metal gold. And I just love the way it looks. And then what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna take my raffia, I'm going to put some Mod Podge, you know, glue type stuff down in the base or the, the lid, if you will, and try to get that raffia to stick. And then I was trying to get the little baby Jesus in there. I used a couple of tumbling tower blocks to make like a little bed and um, he just wouldn't fit right, so I had to add a few more tumbling tower blocks. You'll see me hot gluing those into the lid in a minute, just so that it would stay. So there I am, and I just kind of really quickly brushed them with that burnt umber paint, just made them look worn, and I'm gonna end up needing two right there. It still wasn't enough, and so now I've got something to kind of lift it up, and I can still close the lid, which actually ends up on the bottom on this ornament. Now I did use another ornament first and it was a disaster so when you see it in the reveal picture I just didn't want to retake all of the pictures. So there is baby Jesus just sitting on that right there and now I switched out the silver lid for the gold one and I love this so much. You could make this with your kids or grandkids and tell them the story of Jesus. For this DIY, I'm gonna use these large paint sticks that I got at Lowe's. A package comes of three and it's under $2. And I'm actually gonna use six of them. And then I'm gonna use two of these smaller little paint stir sticks, a scrap piece of wood that came from something from the Dollar Tree, little pop-up stickers from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got this plaid ribbon and I'm gonna use that. I'm not gonna use that heart that you see there, but I thought it was at first. And then a jot black marker from Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use some burnt umber paint from Apple Barrel. Some ink paint by Waverly, which is just black. And my Rust-Oleum Linden White chalk paint. First thing, I'm gonna do some painting, get that all done. I'm gonna paint six of these little pop-up stickers in the ink color. This DIY is inspired by a really cute project I saw on Pinterest. 
and dry them with my heat tool from Amazon. And now I'm going to take my paint stir sticks and I'm going to paint them all with that white paint. I want to cut them first because why paint things you don't need? So what I'm doing is making two taller, another two a little bit shorter, and then another two a little bit shorter than that. And I'm just going to use my little miter box saw from Dollar Tree and cut them. And now I'm going to take the smaller paint stir sticks and I'm going to measure just two little rectangles off of that. And that's going to be like the brim of a hat and so I'm going to cut those with my miter shears from Amazon. The smaller paint sticks are thinner so I can manage that with miter shears. Now I'm going to take that little scrap piece. I think it was from a pumpkin. It doesn't look like a pumpkin smile. <laughs> and I'm going to cut these three little pieces and those are going to be noses and I use my miter shears to do that. And I'm going to grab the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint and paint them orange. You probably just figured out we're making snowmen. <laughs> so I'm going to paint them orange and let them dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and start painting all those stir sticks in the linen white chalk paint. And I'm going to do both sides and the back. I like all of my projects to be finished and so that's how I do it. And then I'm going to take a brush and just very lightly put some on the top of the nose that looks like maybe snow hit the snowman's nose. I'm going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue pieces together to make my snowman. So every two paint stir sticks, the large ones, are going to be a snowman and they're three different heights so there you can see them. Now I'm going to take my Waverly ink paint I'm going to paint just the very top portion because that would be part of their black hat and I'm going to do that on both sides as well of all three pieces. Then I'm going to take some tape just because I want the back side to have a clean line. The front side is going to have these little pieces which are the brim of the hat and I painted those black as well. And then I will hot glue those right there, some at an angle and some straight on. It's time to make our snowmen look like snowmen. So I'm going to take the eyes that I painted black, put two on each snowman. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and just kind of make those little white crescents in their eyes. And I made them each a little different so they'd have different personality. I kind of envision this as a family with a mom and dad and a little snowman. <laughs> now I'm going to put the noses on with some hot glue. I also used hot glue on the back of those stickers just to make sure they'd stay no matter what. Come find me on social media. I'd love to see you there. Now I'm going to take that drop marker. I'm just going to make little happy faces on them. If you like to watch videos when you craft like I do, check out my mega video playlist. And I'm going to take some of my red crimson paint from Waverly and just barely tap on a little bit to make some rosy cheeks on each one. Then I'm going to take my white paint and use a stippling brush and just go over the tops where snow might land when it falls. And they're going to get that on the front and back of their hats. And then I've got these adorable red buffalo check beads I got on Amazon and I'm going to glue three on each one for their little buttons. Aren't they the cutest? I'm going to take my plaid ribbon, tie one around each of their necks and I'm going to make each one a little bit different length like the child will have a medium sized one, the dad will have a shorter one and the mom will have a longer one just to be more fashionable if you know what I mean. Aren't they cute? Now I need to fill that gap from the top of the paint sticks so I'm using a little bit of scrapbook paper and I'm just going to glue it on and then paint it black and then touch up the snow wherever I need to and that makes it all just look like one solid piece of wood. But I liked the curves on the sides of the paint sticks because it really made it look like a hat. I'm going to take a little chalk marker from the Dollar Tree and just say let's get cozy and it's just regular printing nothing fancy. Now I'm going to distress them a little with my burnt umber paint. Just going to dry brush it with a small brush, you know, tap a little bit on very lightly in all of the seams and edges and just a teeny bit in the middle of them. I really like the way that's turning out. Now I need to attach them to each other so I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue and they're going to overlap a little bit so the dad's going to be in the back and the mom will be when you're facing him on his left and the child will be to the right and I love that because they are getting cozy just like it says. Now I needed something for them to be in. I wanted them to kind of be in like a little greenery kind of garden snowball thing. So I found this box that had a top. I unscrewed it, took it off, sanded it down and I painted the whole box in the white linen chalk paint. Then I'm going to get some cardboard that I have from a box of something that I received in the mail and I'm going to use it for filler because I don't want to fill the whole thing. I'm going to take this little dust mop from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to hot glue it in and over the edges so it looks like snow has fallen and is kind of falling out of it. Then I'm going to put the snowmen in the very back. I left a little gap there for them and I am going to add some more snow around the back and that's going to camouflage the staples that I end up using to attach it. And so I'm just going to glue that on there and then I'm going to take my staple gun and I'm going to staple a couple of staples right into the thickest part and then I'll put more snow. I've got little battery operated lights 
from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to attach that and I'm going to hide the controls under the snow towards the snowman but you make it so you can reach in and turn it off and on and add some cute greenery I'm going to flock it all put some little mini pine cones from the Dollar Tree flock everything because it looks like a snowstorm just happened and it's fallen all over and then I'm going to take these little mini snowballs, got two different sizes, and I'm just going to start gluing them all over and they've kind of got sparkles in them. They're also from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to add them wherever I can and make sure everything looks like snow fell on it. And then I feel like snowballs wouldn't all be the same size, so I'm going to add these little teeny ones all over in little bunches. The last thing I'm going to do is take my burnt umber and distress the box so that it matches. And oh my gosh, I am loving this really good size. You can make this any size you want and I know these are expensive in stores. I'm going to be using this little Christmas tree from the Dollar Tree, a mop head from the Dollar Tree, and a little, I don't know, I think it's like a little cleaning pad or, or a little like dusting mop head. And then some fabric I got at Walmart where it comes like four little pieces. The important thing to note is that for this get together of my fellow DIYers on YouTube, one of the things we had to do was use one of these mini Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. So I put it together, super easy. I'm just going to fluff out the tree. I'm also going to arrange the branches so that they are kind of leaning down and then the little ends curve upward. It's a little bit tall for what I'm going to use it for so I'm going to take the very top and just fold it down because I'm turning this into something that isn't a Christmas tree so I don't need it to be quite so pointy and tall. Now I'm going to take the fabric from Walmart and I'm going to pick the one I like the best which was this one and I'm just kind of positioning it to see how I'm going to roll it up to make almost like a Santa type hat. So I think that's a good size and I'm going to cut it right there play with the edges and hot glue them like a little hem. Only on one side, actually, you won't see the other side. It'll be rolled into the hat. And then I'll also do it along the very bottom of the hat. Now I'm gonna get out an iron and iron it, which I'll do that off camera. And now I'm rolling it into the little cone shape. Checking out with the tree what it's gonna look like on top. And I'm gonna hot glue it together just down the side. It's not a perfect cone and that's okay for what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take one of these super cute little gold mini ornaments from the Dollar Tree that has like glitter on it already and I'm going to hot glue it into the very top. I kind of pulled it open and then I'm going to bend it over a little so it's resting a little bit more on its side and not sticking straight up and I'm just going to use hot glue to position it. Next I'm going to take that little dusting mop and I'm going to cut off a strip that will be the brim of my little Santa hat. So you see I'm just cutting a straight line there and then I'm going to hot glue it all the way around and I'm going to leave the seam in the very back and this actually will fit all the way around and I can squish it so that it does because remember it's going on top of the tree so no problem. I love this little mop. It can be used for anything like snow or furry things like this. It's just perfect. However, warning, it gets everywhere. I will be picking this thing up for days. <laughs> And now I'm just finishing off attaching it to the very bottom of my little Santa hat. I'm going to set it on top of the tree and see how it looks and kind of position it. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. So that's it. My little hat is made. Next, I'm going to take the actual mop head and use it to make like a beard or you've seen other people do it for a gnome. And by the way, we are making a Christmas gnome. And I decided to leave that plastic piece on because I can hide it under the hat. So I'm just going to trim across the beard, get them pretty level. And then I'm literally, it's hard to see this because it's so tall, <laughs> but I'm positioning it up inside where the hat would be. And I'm going to use some floral wire. I'm going to cut a couple pieces and I'm going to stick it through and around the tree and then under that plastic piece so that it really attaches the beard onto the tree. Tree. And I think watching it will make more sense than me describing it. Once I get my ends, you know, right where I want them, I'm going to pull real tight. I'm going to twist them around and then I'm just going to hide them in the tree and in the beard. You won't even see them at all. I'm 
I'm gonna put my hat back on and yes, I did put it in the right place and you cannot see that plastic piece of the mop at all. So I'm very happy. Isn't it cute already? I have these googly eyed ping pong balls from Dollar Tree. They were out during Halloween and I cut one in half and now I'm just trimming the edges. I'm going to paint it with the crimson red. I have to do about three coats to cover that eyeball. I didn't have any uh, ping pong balls without an eyeball on them. Now I'm going to take some folk art white paint and I'm just going to put that over the top while it's still a little wet so I can create kind of a rosy little nose and I'm just going to keep doing that till I like it. I thought this little ball was the perfect size. I'm going to put a lot of hot glue on the edges of the ball and then I'm going to attach it just under the brim of the hat so you see most of the nose sticking out and it just works as a perfectly cute little gnome nose. All rosy and adorable. Next, I've got this little wood piece from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little house, and I want them to be holding something. So I'm gonna use some apple barrel burnt umber paint, and I'm watering it down. I sprayed my brush with some water, and then I will wipe off the excess, and then that way I've created a little bit of a stain, and I made my whole house brown. It felt a little plain, so I got a gold Arteza paint marker, and I'm gonna do all the trim and the roof line, and I'm also going to write Gnome Sweet Gnome. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm loving this little guy. I don't think I ever made a gnome on my channel, but he's so cute, and I don't have a name, so if you have any great name ideas, I like to name things. <laughs> so put your name suggestions, and I'll let everyone know who the winner is. <laughs> I do decide to go into the windows and use my vermilion color um, Arteza paint marker, which is basically a red. I just thought that brightened it up just a little. I didn't want to go too crazy. And then I found this cute little pick that had a bow on it already, two berries, and a little bit of um, a flocked like fern or snow, whatever, on the, the greenery. I'm going to take two of the stems from the Christmas tree as if they were his arms and I am going to attach the sign to it and that is it. You guys, he's so cute. I love this and I hope you guys love him as much as I do. this square wreath frame from the Dollar Tree. I finally found them, so I bought a few. And um, there's some things in the background I'm not gonna use, but I was still deciding. So I am gonna use two of the Christmas trees, the mini Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree in this particular one. And I'm gonna use this red burlap that I also got at the Dollar Tree. It's gonna take me, I think, two and a half rolls to get all the way around. And I did put it pretty thick, so I probably could have gotten away with just a little bit less. And I'm just gonna start hot gluing that to the frame. And the reason I'm putting this on one is I like the red color and two I need something to attach things to and to cover up the wire frame so that's what I'm doing and when I get to the corner I just kind of angle it and hot glue it again so that I can cover up the corner and then I start over going down the side and I do the same thing to all of the four corners just wanted to let you know that I do have a mega video playlist it's down in my description box I did it sort of at an angle just because I thought it looked pretty. You don't have to do that. You could just do it straight on any way you want, actually. I'm not sure if any of you are on social media, but I'm also on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Same name. If you want to find me there, come over and say hi. And there at the end, I just finished it off and then cut off the excess and hot glued it down. And so that's obviously going to be the back. Next, I'm gonna open up my Christmas trees. I'm gonna set them up, but I'm not gonna use the legs. And in fact, after I fluff them a little bit, I am going to pull that bottom piece off. You see that round plastic thing? It actually just comes right off which was perfect because that takes some of the weight off of it. There it goes. And I'm going to place one going down in a corner and one going across. And that's kind of like creating a swag. And that's really what I'm trying to do with this wreath. It'll have a really pretty swag on it. I'm going to use some floral wire and I'm going to thread a needle and I'm going to basically kind of sew it around those pieces, the metal pieces, so that it's super firm. And I'm just going to go in and out and do it on both pieces. And then I'm going to do some more a little further down the trees. That is going to make it super 
super secure and I could remove it later if I want to and I'm not using any hot glue to put down these two trees at all. Now if you don't happen to have any floral wire on hand you could use twine or chenille stems or you could just use hot glue or E6000 anything you want just to make sure that it stays but keep in mind those metal rods or tree trunks are a little bit heavier than just the branches themselves. Once I have my two trees in place that form my swag, I got some beautiful Christmas ribbon. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you how to make a bow because I don't think I'm very good at it. <laughs> so I just made a lot of loops, put a Chanel pipe cleaner in between, and then I did another bow where I just wrapped around and then I cut a little slit in the middle on each side and then I tie another Chanel stem around the center of that in order to then make another bow to put on top and I just fluff them like crazy. That's the only thing I know how to tell you to do. <laughs> You know, Crafting Cousins, who are the hosts of this Get Together on YouTube, are the best bow makers I've ever seen, so definitely check them out for that. I'm going to use my chenille stem that was already on there and attach that to the corner, and it covers up those little metal edges. Now I'm going to make a little banner on the end of my ribbon where I just fold it up a teeny bit, and I did learn that from Crafting Cousins, too. Now I'm going to take this cute Christmas ornament. It's just a big red glittery ornament and I it's got greenery and a bow on it and I'm just gonna tie it right on to the center and it's just a great little centerpiece. And then I have two pine cones <laughs> that my husband foraged and I flocked. Now I did decide afterwards I should flock the swag. I should have done that before. So if you're gonna do something like this, do all your flocking ahead of time instead of like what I did. I'm gonna add these gold ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I'm using some floral wire and then I'm just putting them on really securely around different parts of the swag to decorate it. I am really loving how this is going so far, but I felt like I needed something in that other corner, so I got this cute little ornament from the Dollar Tree that says Believe, and I just cut off the string that it had to hang it, and I'm just gonna hot glue it straight across in that corner, and I think that is just the perfect touch. Now I mentioned that I wanted to flock the swag, so I do that, but first I'm going to use a little bit of a Chanel stem to create a hanger on the back, and I'm gonna take that needle again with some jute twine, and I'm actually going to attach it that way because then I can get it around the wire of the wreath frame, and it will be very secure, but I'll also add some hot glue as extra insurance. And then comes the white chalk paint from Folk Art and I'm just going to quickly flock all of the greenery carefully so that I don't get any of the paint on anything and that's why I should have done this sooner. But I got to tell you I absolutely love this wreath and I'm so happy with how it turned out. This one is going to end up on my mom's door. For this super easy DIY, I'm using this wood round from the Dollar Tree and a window cling sticker from the Dollar Tree. And I cannot tell you how easy this is gonna be. I'm gonna remove the hanger and the tag. I'm gonna sand it down. I'm gonna use a little bit of the white chalk paint from Folk Art. I'm gonna do the front side. And then, because I don't wanna mess with the edges with the paintbrush, it's always such a mess. I'm gonna use my white marker from Arteza. It's a paint marker. I'm just gonna go around the edge. It's kind of cheating but hey, it works and it was a much cleaner thing. I didn't have to go back and touch up afterwards. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna draw some lines in pencil and then I'm gonna smudge them with my finger. I learned that from the Crafting Cousins and that's how I'm gonna make my ship clock lines. And then what excess that's on my fingers, I'm gonna rub it around the edge and over the open parts. I'm gonna take the window clings that I wanna use. And so I've got this Let It Snow, this adorable red truck with the Christmas tree, and then I'm gonna add some snowflakes. I'm going to take them off, put some Mod Podge down, just a thin layer. I'm gonna place them back on and put Mod Podge over the top. And that is it. That's how easy this one is to do. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love it. I'm gonna put that jute 
line back in the holes and that's the hanger and then this one's done and my husband has already claimed it for his office area because you know he loves those red trucks <laughs> hope you guys like this one and i hope you get to make it because it was so fun in farmhouse and super easy This DIY, I'm gonna use a wood round from the Dollar Tree and then a super cute reindeer or deer ornament from the Dollar Tree also. And then some really gorgeous napkins. It looks like they were from the Christmas tree shop that were gifted to me by a sweet friend named Jamie. And I'm going to separate the plies. This one had three plies. Note to self, never use three ply napkins. The first ply is super easy to get off. The second one, oh my gosh, not so easy. So I did that off camera. I'm going to lay down some Mod Podge on half of my wood round. It's easier to work with projects like this with tissue paper or napkins in sections rather than the hole. That way you can control it a little bit better. So I'm going to rub that down gently and then I'll do the bottom half. Now I want this to look kind of rustic and older farmhouse kind of thing. So I'm not going to do, use my brayer or saran wrap. I don't mind if there's some ripples on it. I'm going to cut off the excess and then I'm going to take a nail file and only moving downward, I'm going to sand down and then that will separate a perfect clean edge with the napkin off the edge of my wood. I love doing this and you can do this with a sanding sponge or sanding paper. And the next thing I'm going to do is remove this sticker on the back because I have to do that. I always have to remove my stickers. I'm going to use this walnut furniture marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go around and stain the edges. It's a nice way to do this without worrying about what I get on the front. It's just fast, easy. I feel like I'm cheating, but it's okay. And I'm going to very gently put a super light coat of Mod Podge across the front. I don't want to rip the napkin, so I'm being very careful. I'm going to separate the little deer from the wreath. First I thought I was going to use the wreath and then I decided not to. Now we are not hunters, not for any reason other than we just don't hunt, nothing against hunting, but I thought I would never have like a deer in my home on the wall. <laughs> but I thought what a cute idea to mount this little deer. So I'm using a combination of E6000 and hot glue so that I can keep working and it will hold really well. And I'm going to put some little greenery picks that are Christmassy up at the top. They have like glitter on them and little snowballs and then I'm going to add some little Little baby pine cones and some little berries and this is the cutest little baby mounted deer ever oh my gosh I mean I will hang this up in my house because it's super cute I love it and just a fun way to be festive and rustic and farmhouse and I just love it I made a little hanger for the back using a popsicle stick and some jute twine and that's it let me know what you guys think. I love this one. given these wood boards by a friend who is moving and didn't need them anymore and they're so perfectly distressed. I love them just the way they are. I'm going to use my jigsaw power tools. I'm so excited. You guys have only used it once and uh, I'm going to do it live on the camera because that's just how excited I am. I'm going to be cutting these into planks and I do have a really cool jigsaw that I got for a Christmas gift. It's by Skill and I love it so far. So I'm just going to make some measurements um, so I know how long my planks are going to be and that's just up to you whatever you want to do and then I'm going to draw some lines I don't stay on them perfectly because I'm so new at this but you know practice makes perfect and here we go
I did it and I was careful and I used all the safety precautions so I'm super excited. Now I'm just going to measure that one plank several more times because I need four pieces and I'm going to draw lines and I'm going to cut them again. So I get a little better each time so I'm just excited that I did it. Oh by the way I wanted to mention that I have a mega video playlist. I'll put the link down in my description box in case you want to check it out. Now I'm going to take my four pieces and decide which side I want to be the front because they have some holes in them. I'm going to cover those up. And the way I'm going to attach them is I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue in between each of the planks. So I'm going to kind of just do some wood glue and then add a little hot glue in between each of the little sections that I did. And then you'll see what I do to secure it even more when I'm done with this part. That I have both of the glues on there I'm gonna push the pieces together and hold them really tight I don't have any clamps so I have to hold them and once I got all four pieces together I'm gonna to use this piece of lath and I'm gonna cut it with my little I don't know what this thing is called handsaw I don't know little miter box I think that's it anyway it's not my favorite tool but for something small that's what I was gonna use so I just want to get two pieces and I am going to do the same thing after I sand them I'm gonna use hot glue and wood glue and attach them on the back going the opposite direction of my planks just like this so that I have extra security there just because they're, those planks are very heavy it's a heavy sign and it's 48 inches tall so it's a big one it's a pretty substantial piece so I want to make sure it stays secure I want to let you guys know that I'm on Instagram Pinterest and Facebook same name and I hope to see you over there I am going to paint them white with this folk art white chalk paint. I'm not going to do a heavy coat, just a very light coat. Since the planks are so heavily distressed, I don't want to do solid white, so I'm just kind of brushing it on, covering it, but not going crazy. I'm also going to do the two ends of the planks, which you can see there where I didn't cut evenly, but I'm going to cover that up with something. And then the other side, I did pretty good, actually. I've got this fabric that I got at Walmart. And first of all, I'm just gonna iron it with my little Easy Press Mini, just cause I already had it next to me, my iron was put away. Once I do that, I'm gonna make some cuts and I measured about every two and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna do that all the way across. And then once I finish cutting it, and I made sure I cut it on the side where it was going with the grain so I could just rip it across. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rip every single one of those pieces. That way I can use these pieces and have the rough edges. I'm going to hot glue it together, like fold it in half because it's a little wider than I thought I was going to need. And I'm going to do this with every piece and that will be the beginning of what I'm going to make, which is a Christmas tree. Have you ever seen those squiggly line Christmas trees? It's like one line, it just keeps going back and forth. So I thought I would try that with some fabric. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use hot glue to secure the ends and then later I'll go back and get some of the middle pieces if they're sticking up at all. And I just love the way this looks. And I know Christmas trees aren't red, but I just thought it was very bright and festive against the white distressed planks. So I really, really like it. You could always do this in green though, if you like that better. When I finish a piece, I just hot glue one to the next one, as you've seen me do here. And then it looks like one kind of continuous piece. Next thing I'm going to do is put a star on the top. I am going to go ahead and paint this with that white chalk paint again. It's just a coverage, but not like I'm, I'm not going crazy with it. And then I'm going to use some Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel to go ahead and use a makeup sponge and distress around the edges. And then I decided to also do a little bit of distressing across the top of it. And I do this on both sides because you will be able to see the back of it a little bit. And then where I went a little heavy handed, I just went back with a little bit of that white. So I'm going to use that combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach it to the very top. And that's how I'm covering up those uneven boards. See, I had a plan there. Now I'm going to use a piece of lath that was left over and I'm just going to use the burnt umber again and then I am going to really sand around the edges and over the top so it looks super distressed. 
And then I'm gonna hot glue that with wood glue down right at the base of the tree. It'll kind of just tuck under the very end there. And there is my tree stem. Now I'm gonna take some heavy duty cardboard that I had from some boxes, cut it into the shape of three different like presents. I'm gonna get some cute Christmas scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna use my glue stick from the Dollar Tree, that little jot glue stick, which works really well on paper. I'm gonna put it down. And I'm just gonna use a green Arteza paint marker to do the edges so you don't see the brown cardboard. I'm gonna do that with all three of these. And then I don't want to put ribbon or anything. I'm trying to keep this pretty simple. So I'm just going to add a couple little embellishments to the top of each one, like a, as if it were a bow. So I've got a little pick with some berries and greenery, and then got one with just berries, and then I have one with little baby pine cones. Hot gluing everything down, and then I'm going to touch up those berries because I ripped them off a bigger pick, so they got a little, you know, warped. Anyway, I love this. I don't know about you guys, but this is different, and I just think it came out so cute. You'll have to let me know what you think, but I am super happy with it. This DIY, I'm gonna use one of those little houses from the Dollar Tree that have those obnoxious little roses on them. And then I've got this cool little napkin that I had from last year and this piece of scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna use my heat tool and work forever to get this off. I only have one more of these left and I probably will never buy them again, you guys. Too much work. Anyway, finally got it off, but it's so rough for me scraping now. I've gotta sand it down and I'm gonna to try to sand off most of the words too. Take the tags off. Then I'm gonna figure out where I wanna place this on my scrap of paper so I get the pattern part, well, the part of the pattern that I actually like. I'm gonna trace around it with a pencil and then I'm just gonna cut that out. So I'm curious if any of you are on social media like Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. If you are, come over and find me with the same name over there. Next, I'm gonna use this adhesive glue that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put that right on there. Just rub it down and it's pretty close to the edges. I might have to sand a little bit off later, but I got a pretty good fit there. And I like to do it in sections. So I usually do the top or the bottom first and then the other side. That way I don't have to move the whole piece around. I have a little bit of flexibility. And I'm gonna use my brayer that I got at Amazon to smooth that out. I'm gonna paint the other side white with this home decor folk art white chalk paint because then under the napkin, you won't see the color of that house. You'll just see the white. Dry it with my heat tool that I also got from Amazon and love that thing. And then I'm gonna paint all the way around the edges with this crimson red from Waverly. Then I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and I'm going to lay that down on top of the house. I'm gonna cut out a piece of the napkin so that I can decide how I wanna place it. And of course, I wanna put the buttons right down the middle. It's gonna look like a little Santa without the head. And again, working in sections, I'm just gonna put that bottom on first. And this I'm rubbing very gently. I had already removed the ply on the napkin. Don't forget, if it says two ply, you have to remove one. If it says three ply, you gotta remove two pieces. And I'm just gonna rub that really gently. I don't wanna use my brayer on this because it's still wet and it'll just pull the napkin right up. So now that it's dry, I'm gonna take a nail file and gently, only in the downward motion, rub along the edges and the napkin just comes right off. And if you do this when it's wet, you could pull the napkin. So make sure you wait till it's dry. I'm gonna do the same thing around the edges where the scrapbook paper is just because I had a teeny, teeny bit over the edge there. Now I'm gonna very gently put Mod Podge on top. Again, I don't wanna rip that napkin and it's so easy to do. So it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm not. It's actually in fast motion. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on the other side as well. Now I felt like it looked a little plain. So I found this kind of glittery greenery. I think it was, oh gosh, I wanna say that I got it at Hobby Lobby. Anyway, I'm gonna cut off two little teeny pieces and basically make kind of like a little swag that goes on one side and then the other. And I'm gonna use a little bit of jute cord to tie them together because it's impossible for them to stay together with the hot glue unless you sit there and hold it forever and use a huge clump. And I thought this would make it so much easier because I could already have them laying down. So I just cut off the extra jute and then I am gonna go ahead and hot glue that right to the very peak of the house on the roof line. And I'm also gonna tack down a couple leaves to make it lay a little bit flatter. Then I found these little gold glittery balls that were on another pick. And I'm just gonna put a few of those on there just to give it a little pizzazz, you know, a little Christmas festivity. And then I decided I put a couple of little red berries from another pick right in the middle. That finishes it off. And honestly, I love this one and I really hope you guys like it. 
It was very easy to make and I love anything that's double sided so you get more than one DIY out of it. DIY, I have one of the little crates from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use Rust-Oleum white linen chalking and I'm going to do the middle stripe all the way around and I'll have to tape off the sides to make that possible because there aren't indentations there like there are on both of the sides. And there I am doing the side. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now once that's done, I'm going to get my crimson red chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to paint the top stripe around, the bottom stripe around, I mean all the way around it, the very bottom of it which becomes the top in this DIY and the inside, all everything else is going to be red. I should have just said everything else. And I will have to use some tape to make that possible again on the two sides. Once it is all painted with the red and dry, I'm going to use my antique wax from Waverly and take a really, really small art brush and I'm just going to get between those rows so it looks like, kind of like uh, the rims or, oh my gosh, the covers of the books. This is a book stack, which you probably figured out by now. I think I'm having one of those days where words are just not coming easily to me. So anyway, I am going to write with my jot marker from Dollar Tree three different Christmas fun ideas and I'm trying to copy the Ray Dunn font. Well, it's not exact, but hey, it's okay. So cookies, Hallmark, and cocoa. Now, doesn't that just sound great? And then on the other side, I'm going to put eggnog, candy canes, and holly. And I thought that way it will also be two-sided. That way, no matter what angle you see it from, it's got something on it. So I'm going to take this baker's twine. It's in red and white, which I love. And I'm going to wrap it around several times. And then I'm going to cut it and hot glue it into the inside. And that will help make it festive. And then I'm also going to add some cute little embellishments, you know, some little picks with berries and a pine cone, one to each side. That way, no matter where you look, which way you look at it, it's going to have some cute decor. Super easy, you guys, but adorable. And anyone can make this so fun. So let me know if you make book stacks, do you write on them or use a Cricut or stickers? Let me know. I have been making these cute cubes for the last couple of seasons, so I thought I'd better do a Christmas one too. So I'm getting all of the calendars that I have and a couple of pieces of scrapbook paper because I wanna use those little pictures on the back. So I'm gonna take all the Christmas ones in the back, which are December, and then those two pieces of scrapbook paper I will also cut. And I've cut them to the right size for my little cube or dice from Dollar Tree. It's made out of foam. I'm going to hot glue the four corners of every picture on, and you don't need to worry about the rest because we're gonna be covering that and I've done it before where I've painted it and done all these things and then I realized I really didn't need to do that so this is now the easiest way to make this so I have six sides and I'm going to attach little cutouts to each of the six sides you could do this for any occasion any season any reason it's the cutest little tear tray decor I just love it once I have all of my sides covered I'm going to take this mop head from Dollar Tree. Just because it's white and it, it'll fit with my Christmas decor, I'm going to hot glue it around all of the pictures. And that's what covers up the rest of the dice. And then I'm going to take my red and white baker's twine and I'm just going to hot glue it right over the top of that. And now I've got this really cute kind of candy cane stripe going on. And that's all there is to it. It's so fun and it's so easy, you guys. You've got to try making one of these.
This is probably the easiest DIY in the whole video. I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and I'm going to use a spice jar that I emptied out and I'm also gonna use some buttons that I got at the Dollar Tree. And then I have a couple pieces of ribbon. I'm actually gonna glue them together to make it work. I just didn't wanna waste them. And my drop marker from Dollar Tree, I don't use that orange piece of dice. I'm gonna paint the whole spice jar, except for the rim, in two coats of the paint. And when it dries, I'm gonna put three buttons right down the middle, obviously, like a little snowman. Now this snowman's not gonna have a face. He's just gonna have his buttons and a scarf. I'm gonna glue those pieces together, wrap them around the neck of the spice jar, hot glue it together, and wrap it around his little neck. And that is it. So easy, so cute, and it's like a trash to treasure. I love this one. Super, super easy. I don't know about you guys, but I love to watch videos while I'm crafting. And so I have created a mega video playlist where I have longer videos. So if you're interested, the link's in my description. love decorating these little mini rolling pins that I got on Amazon. I'm going to use some scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's so cute. It's got red trucks with little Christmas trees in the back. And I'm just going to measure exactly how big of a piece I need and then I'm going to cut that out. Then I'm gonna use this liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna just start doing little sections at a time and that way I won't get crooked. It would be so easy to do that even on a little teeny rolling pin like this. And then I'm just gonna rub it on and slowly wrap it around the rolling pin until I get to the very end and then I will cut off the excess. Once that's done, I'm going to use some of this rope that I got at Walmart and I'm going to wrap it around each of the ends and that will kind of finish off where the piece of scrap of paper meets the little mini rolling pin handle. I'm going to do that to each side. And then to make it a little more festive, I'm gonna use this black and white Baker's twine and I'm gonna wrap a piece around each side of the rope on both sides of the rolling pin. And that just kind of gives it a little bit more of a festive feel and I think it's super cute and ties it all in together. Now, of course, I always need to add more. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a couple of embellishments on this one. I'm going to make a little bow out of the black and white Baker's twine, and I'm going to attach that to one side of the mini rolling pin. Just a shoestring bow, super, super simple. And then I'm also gonna put a couple little teeny pieces of greenery from some Christmas picks that I have. They're sparkly and they're really cute. And I'm just gonna have two pieces kind of facing each direction, uh, like a little swag. And then I'm gonna add a little pine cone in the center. It's just so adorable. And then I decided I just had to do one more thing. So I'm gonna add a couple little berries to where the pine cone is. And now I love it. And this one is officially done. little decor piece is like another trash to treasure. I'm going to use some box pieces that were packed in uh, something that I received in the mail and a couple pieces from a gift bag and some tissue paper. All I'm going to do is cut these pieces into little mini shapes like presents and then I'm going to take each of the different kinds of paper I have and wrap them. That is it. I'm going to use hot glue to seal off the ends after I wrap them and then I'm going to wrap them around. Instead of with ribbon, I'm going to use some twine and put a couple little embellishments on them. This is so easy. I mean, if you're not good at wrapping gifts, I suppose this could be difficult, but you could make it work somehow, even if it's not perfect. And then you just set them on your tear tray wherever you want. You could attach them together or you could keep them separate like I did. 
I just wanted that flexibility. I mean, I could still set them all together, but this way, if I wanted to separate them, I could. And I love these. So let me know down in the comments, do you decorate tiered trays? And do you do different ones for different times of the year? Or do you just have one that stays up all year round? Or do you have multiple in your house? I am so curious to know how everyone is doing with tiered trays these days. I love them. This DIY, I'm going to use this really small uh, wreath form from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some of this uh, mesh tubing and also this deco mesh. I think that's what it's called. And then these little twist ties that are sparkly green and some scatter foam for Christmas time. And this is also the sign I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut these into six inch strips. And once I have pairs of them, I'm going to fold it in from both sides and, and do that to both pieces. I'm going to show you this twice. And then I'm just going to squeeze them in the middle and hold them together and then use one of those twist ties cut into smaller pieces and secure them together like a little crisscross. And then I'm gonna leave the tie open in the back so that I can attach it to the wreath form. And I'm gonna do this for all my pieces. And depending on your wreath form size is how many you'll need, so I can't really say how many you'll need. I think I used eight of the green ones on mine of the six inch pieces which turned out to be one whole roll of that green deco mesh. I'm showing you again here how I fold it in from each side to the center. That way the ends are on the inside and you don't see those rough edges. And then I'm just gonna put that little twist tie around and hold it. And I learned this technique from the Crafting Cousins. I'll put their channel link in the description box. They're such great teachers. You'll love them if you don't know them. And this is just me showing you how I attached it. And there are all of them now attached to the wreath form. And I put it on the outside rung, by the way. And now I'm going to take that tube meshing and I'm just going to cut little six inch pieces and I'm going to tie them around the center of each of those little crisscross pieces, make a knot, and then I'm going to fray all of the piece that's not part of the actual knot. And that makes it look like really sparkly little jaggedy things. And there they are. Now I'm going to take this white cut of deco mesh that looks like it has snow on it. And I'm going to make, I think I make about, oh gosh, I want to say six of those. But again, depends on your wreath size. I put them throughout the wreath just for a little pop. And then I did the same thing with the tube mesh where I tied a knot around the center of that deco mesh. And then I kind of fray the ends all the way. And you see that, that sparkle in the middle there. Now I'm gonna take my little sign that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna see how that's gonna fit in the middle. Now I'm gonna take the scatter foam and I'm gonna take four of the little Christmas trees and just put it at the top, the bottom, and on either side, kind of like a clock, you know, 12, three, six, nine. And then I'm gonna take the snowflake ones and put one between every Christmas tree with hot glue and that's all. You just gotta make sure they stick really good to that deco mesh. And now the wreath is upside down. I'm going to take two of the medium sized popsicle sticks and I'm going to use my Cropodile, which is a great tool. I use it a lot. I'm starting to get arthritis in my hands and it's very helpful. If you are struggling with that, you will really like this tool. I got it on Amazon and I'm going to use those little ties and attach the popsicle sticks to my wreath form. So do the same thing on both of the popsicle sticks. Then I'm going to add a little hot glue, just kind of keep them in place. And then I'm going to put a bunch of hot glue on the top and bottom of my picture and attach that right to the popsicle stick and then I'm gonna fluff my wreath. Guys, it's that easy, honestly. That's all it took to make this. And then because you can see a little bit of the wreath form, I'm gonna add some more of that tubing around those parts of the wreath that you can see. Like, so all you see is that tubing when you look at it from the front. Take a piece of twine. I'm going to tie that to the wreath form and that becomes our hanger. And honestly, guys, that's it. It's super cute, super fun. And I hope you like it as much as I do. So 
excited about this DIY. I'm using a jar that we emptied out after using it, some Christmas ornaments from Dollar Tree, and some of my Arteza paint markers. I'll also be using a little bit of white folk art paint. Now I'm looking at a picture, so you know I'm not freehanding. I mean, I'm freehanding, but I'm looking at a picture. And I'm gonna be drawing a part of the Grinch, and I dried that off with my uh, heat tool that I got from Amazon, which made this very easy to keep moving forward. And so I'm drawing his sleeve and his hand, and you'll see in a little bit, it's gonna be grabbing an ornament, which is a look that he often has when he's stealing ornaments and being Grinchy, as you know. So like I said, looking at this picture and trying to draw his hands, not the easiest thing, but I'm getting it done. And I'm just, you know, if you see my hand going off camera, it's because I'm dabbing my marker so that it keeps releasing more of the paint because they're starting to get older and dried out. I may have to replace them soon, but I love these paint markers. It lets you be more precise. And I really like that. If you happen to be on social media, come find me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. I'd love to see you there. I'm going to go back over the red a little bit just to darken it. And there's that white chalk paint I'm going to use. My white marker is out of ink now, so I needed to fill that in and brighten it up. And then I'm going to take this fluorescent green and just kind of go over his hand and make it more interesting looking. You know, add a little more dimension and highlights with it. Now I'm going to take a job marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to outline everything and that just really makes it pop. And that way I can give him fuzzy fingers and hands because he has those kind of creepy hairy hands, you know? And so I want to make sure that I get all of that in this picture. Now I'm not an artist, so you know, I'm just looking at a picture and drawing it. Just want to make sure you know that so your expectations are reasonable for me. It's kind of fun doing this though. It's like challenging yourself to do something that you're, you know, maybe not as good at, but you get better every time you do it. So I encourage you to try things that you've never done before and step out of your comfort zone. It's super fun to do. Now I've got it all completed and I found this little red ornament and I needed to lay flat against the jar because I want it to be 3D. So I'm going to cut it in half with my utility knife, but then I've also got that top piece and I'm going to end up using my little snips and uh, cut off the extra edges that make it impossible to stay flat. So you see, I've got that now and I'm making sure that it's gonna fit there, but now I gotta deal with that little gold top. So I'm gonna snip pieces off of that so I can hot glue it back onto the ornament and then I'll be able to hot glue the whole thing onto the jar. And I could have painted this, but I really like the idea of a 3D effect. I thought it made it more fun and interesting. So here I go with the hot glue, trying not to burn myself in case you're wondering, I didn't, but it was close. And now I'm gonna attach it and hold it there till it dries and you know get rid of that excess glue that always seeps out. And now I'm going to get other ornaments. So I've got gold and silver and more red, and I'm just going to kind of alternate putting them into the jar. So I'm going to fill up the jar. There it is. And that part is done now. And I was thinking that the lid looked a little plain. So I'm going to take this mesh tubing that I have that's silver and shiny. I'm going to wrap it around twice and hot glue it to the top. Super easy. But I still felt like the top needed something more. So I found this little wooden knob that I got at Hobby Lobby in their wood section. I'm gonna use my red Arteza paint marker and I'm gonna paint the whole thing and hot glue that little silver mesh tubing around the top. And this one's done and I love it. DIY, I got this little wooden sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and a little bit of burnt umber by Apple Barrel. And I'm going to take off the hanger and remove the tag on the back. I love these little wood signs that they have that are blanks. I'm going to sand it down because they are kind of rough if you've noticed. You can get splinters for sure. I'm going to clean up the mess with my ladybug vacuum from Amazon and I'm going to paint the front side of this with that linen white chalk paint. It's one solid good coat and I'm going to do around the edges. Then I'm going to sand it down and that just makes the paint nice and smooth because I am going to be putting a transfer that I made with my Cricut. You could use stickers. You could even write this if you have nice writing. Uh, there's a lot of options or you could trace it you know, from a piece of paper you printed and so forth. And I do have a free printable for you of this and I will give a link for that in my description box below if you would like to use that. So I measured my lines so I could create a border and I'm gonna use that apple barrel paint and burnt umber uh, to paint around the edges. And I just taped that off and there it is. Now I end up changing that, you'll see. But anyway, now I am putting some Mod Podge over the top because I don't wanna pull my paint off 
important tip, make sure it's dry for a long time before you do it, otherwise you'll pull the Mod Podge off. So now I've put my transfer on using my little scraper tool to make sure that it adheres. And I'm gonna pull off the transfer tape that I'm using to reveal my words, and there they are. And then I did the word Christmas in gold because I really wanted it to pop. So I've got that one there. And then I also am putting his little signature line at the bottom that says the Grinch in a green vinyl. And this says maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. The Grinch. And I love this. I covered it with some Mod Podge to make sure it would be nice and sealed and shiny. And now I'm going to change the border. I just, after I saw it with the black lettering, I felt like it needed to be black. So I took that jot marker that I have from the Dollar Tree and I just went around the whole thing. And I didn't want to leave the back blank and I didn't want to use craft paper because it was small. So I took my marker and I covered the entire back with it. And I think it looks actually really good this way. Now I'm going to take some baker's twine. I've got red and white and black and white. And I'm gonna take three strands. Two of them will be the red and white. I'm gonna tape down the end and I'm gonna braid them. And then I'm gonna pull the two ends through the holes in the sign. And this is what I'm gonna make my hanger with. And I just thought it was much more festive and cute to do it this way. I'm gonna tie knots and then add a little hot glue to secure it and trim the edges. Hey besties, if you enjoy any part of this video, please hit the like button. It really helps my channel and I appreciate it so much. I found these really cute little like fairy lights, if you will, that have little Grinches on them at, I believe it was Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna cut off two of the little plastic Grinch heads and I'm gonna use E6000 and I'm just gonna permanently attach them to the very top of that sign. I thought that would be super cute because there were two different ones in that light pack. And then that's gonna stay there forever because it's E6000 and I just wait for it to dry and this one's done. You guys, I love this one. It's super, super cute. What do you think? Well, I'm gonna use a little mini rolling pin I got on Amazon, my Arteza paint markers, and a little dust mop from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to use the red Arteza paint marker to do this very top portion of the rolling pin all the way up to the handle on that side. Next, I'm gonna take this fluorescent green color and I'm gonna do all of the rest of the rolling pin. And, you know, I do it in kind of little sections. So you'll see in a minute here, I do straight lines down the middle to get rid of those like edges that I created by doing it in smaller sections. I hope that makes sense. I just wanted it to look like all one color without little marks. Now I'm taking a little marker that I have that's got a very fine point. I'm looking at a picture and I am drawing a Grinch face. So <laughs> this is challenging, but you know what? It's actually really fun and you just take your time. I've sped this up. I'm actually going very slow to do this. And I'm just looking at the picture and copying exactly what it is and trying to create my little Grinch face. When I'm crafting, I love to watch other DIY videos. So because of that, I made a mega video playlist. So it's linked in my description if you wanna check it out. He has got the meanest, cutest face. I don't even know if that's an oxymoron, but you know what? It is the meanest, cutest face ever. <laughs> so this is really fun. And I'm just gonna do all the parts that need to be black first. And the only thing I'm gonna add color to is his eyeballs. <laughs> They're actually gonna be a yellow with red little pupils. And you'll see me do that in just a second. If you ever recreate any of my DIYs, find me on Instagram and send me a picture. I would love to see them. He's got some crazy eyebrows and eyelashes, so that part was really interesting to do. And there I am filling in the yellow of his eyes and then the red pupils, again, using my Arteza paint markers. I'm taking a jot marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go back over some of those lines and make them a little thicker. I just didn't wanna do it with this one first in case I really mess things up. And now it's time to make the rim of his Santa hat. So I just cut a really small strip of that dust mop, trimmed it, gave it a major haircut, and I'm gonna hot glue it all the way around. And that is it, he is done and I love him, he's so cute. He's gonna go on one of my tiered trays. Oh, 
For this DIY, I'm going to use a wallpaper roll and a broken pinwheel stick and gold and silver glitter, a toothbrush holder top, and several used and torn gift bags, some I've had for years. I'm going to take a blade and cut a little piece off of this insert of the roll to make a tree trunk. And then I'm going to use this flag red apple barrel acrylic paint. I'm going to paint the toothbrush lid. It takes about four coats to really cover it. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool from Amazon. Next, I'm going to take linen white chalk paint by rust -Oleum, and I'm going to paint that little piece that I cut for the trunk of the tree. And I'm doing that because I want to create a kind of faux wood look. So once I paint it white and dry it, I'm going to take out my antique wax from Waverly and I'm going to go over it and only in one one direction so it looks like a wood grain and when that dries it's going to look a lot like wood. Then I'm going to take this paper towel roll and I'm going to cut two circles out of it that fit the openings on both sides of the tree trunk because I don't want it to be hollow. This is truly going to be the most original Christmas tree. I'm going to use hot glue to attach one end and then trim that up and then for the other one I actually need to make a hole in it and so I'm going to use my crop dial tool that I got at Amazon. I'm going to make a hole right in the center and then I'm going to put some glue in first to create a little bit of a shelf and then I'm going to set that piece in and then I'm going to secure it with a little bit more glue and I'm also going to use the scissors to pull it up as it went in just a little too deep. If you happen to be on social media, I am on Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you ever make anything that I've shown you, I'd love for you to send me a picture. That would be awesome. I'm going to add a little bit more hot glue just to secure that in there. I'm going to use this furniture marker from Dollar Tree in the color Walnut just to do that top and bottom section. The next thing I'm going to do is take all of these gift bags that are torn or whatever and broken. I'm just going to start cutting them into pairs of squares, <laughs> not necessarily from the same bag. And what I'm going to do is start making large ones and a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. And I'm going to glue the two pieces together, the wrong sides together. So both sides are like the pattern of a gift bag. I'm going to keep doing this. I end up doing this for 79 of them. After they're all glued together, I'm going to take my little scissors and I'm going to use the blade of my scissors and scrape along the edge to distress all four sides. I learned this technique from my friend Linda at Faith Chick 777's DIY and Design and I'll put her link down in my description box because she's definitely worth watching. Anyway, now that I show you what that looks like, I'm going to do it to all 79 pieces. I'm going to put on a good video and bam, I'm done. <laughs> I wish it was that fast. Anyway, it did take a little while. Now I'm going to take my glitter, I'm going to take my Mod Podge, and every single piece I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge around all four of the edges. I'm going to put either gold or silver or a combination of the two around all 79 pieces of my what's going to be a Christmas tree. And again, it is time consuming, but I think the end result is worth it. And like I said, there's lots of good videos out there to watch, so you know, I had plenty to do. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this. There they are, all done. <laughs> Again, I wish it was that fast. Anyway, I just wanted you to see what they look like. I'm going to take that little pokey screwdriver thing, and that's the piece that came from a broken pinwheel. And I'm going to bend each piece in half one way and in half the other so I can find the exact center. And that's why I'm going to take that little screwdriver thing and poke right through. And then I'm going to put it right over the top of that broken pinwheel piece. So that will start with my tree. And the biggest pieces will go on the bottom. And I have them ordered from biggest in the bottom to smallest on the top. And again, I'm not going to make you watch me do this just a couple times so you get the idea. And then I'll show you where it is at after they're all attached. And I'm going to stagger them uh, so they're not just laying on top of each other so that there's little points all around. Well, there, we're almost done. Just have to add the top pieces. There we go. There are all the pieces attached. Now I'm kind of squishing them down, trying to fold them down so it looks more like a tree. I'm going to use some E6000 and hot glue to attach my tree trunk to my base. I'm going to hold it in place until the hot glue dries because then I can keep working. Oh, 
I want you to see a side view of all of them. Now, I should have made some more pieces that were kind of the middle size, and I guess I just didn't realize I hadn't made as many. Hard to know until you're there, but I still like it. It's a little unusual looking, but it is definitely the most original tree. Now, I've got these two laser cut stars from the Dollar Tree, and put some Mod Podge on them, and then I'm going to sprinkle both the gold and silver glitter over the top of both of them. And then in a moment, you'll see how I'm going to attach them to that very top of the broken pinwheel stick. I gotta tell you, that glitter's everywhere. I'm gonna be seeing it for weeks, you guys. <laughs> Don't they look pretty though? They look like they have like diamonds on them. So this is from the very top. I'm going to put some hot glue on one side of that point at the top. I'm going to hot glue one of the stars. And then I'm just going to turn it around and do the exact same thing to the other side. So they're like their backs are facing each other. But that way there's a star no matter which side you look at it from. I think it's beautiful. I think it's very unique. And I've never seen anything like it. You'll have to tell me if you have. It was really cool to make. It's a great feeling to take something that was going to go in the trash and turn it into something beautiful. For this ornament, I'm going to take three wood ornament shape cutouts and some white tulle from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use these little mini snowballs. They were gifted to me, but I think they came from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to take these little mini red solo cups, and they definitely came from the Dollar Tree. Those are so cute. I'm going to take my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, and I'm going to paint the front of these ornaments. After I paint all three of them, I'm going to use my heat tool from Amazon to dry them off. I use my metallic silver paint from Folk Art to paint the very tops of the ornaments, you know, the part that would normally be metal. Now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to position my little red solo cup. I want to make like a little bucket, but I want it to lay flat on the ornament. So I'm going to cut half of it off roughly and then hot glue it to the front of one of the ornaments so that it is sitting there and I can fill it up with my little snowballs. Now it takes a little bit to cut it out, but you just have patience until you get it the right size and then flat enough. And there you go, I finally got it the way I wanted it and I feel like it's too tall. So I'm gonna cut it and then kind of overlap it to shorten it and hot glue those two pieces together. So now I have a better sized bucket. I didn't want it to cover the entire ornament. And now that I have the right size, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue that directly to the front of my ornament. I'm gonna put a little extra hot glue on the inside to make sure it's very secure. I'm gonna take my white tool and I'm going to measure, I wanna cover that whole front from where the cup starts going down. It just kinda of adds that little snowy effect and it kinda of dulls the red a little bit, which is what I wanted. And I'm gonna go ahead and start hot gluing that and then trim it as I go. And when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna fold it kinda of like a, a Christmas present where you kinda of fold the two sides in and then pull it under and you'll see me doing that. It's easier for you to watch than explain. Basically, I'm just securing this to the very front. I'm gonna trim around the sides and make sure I don't have any excess hanging over. And now I'm going to go ahead and wrap that bottom like a present, pushing in the sides and then folding that other piece down and I will secure it with hot glue and trim it. And now it's on there just the way I want it. Now I'm gonna take all those little mini snowballs. I'm gonna see how many it takes to fill in. And I thought to myself, I don't need to fill up the whole thing. So I'm just gonna start gluing them just below the surface of the top of the cup and then build up from there. And you'll never know that the bottom isn't filled and that way I can save some of my little snowballs. And they're so cute already, I'm loving it. I'm just hot gluing them in there till I get as many in there as I think looks nice. There we go. Now I'm going to take one of the other ornaments and I'm just going to write in my own handwriting five cents. You know, that one wasn't too difficult. I didn't really need stickers or a Cricut for that. And then I'm going to do the same thing and write snowballs on the third ornament. Try to write it a little bit like the Ray Dunn font. That's what I like to do, but I never quite get it. And now I'm just going to glue all three pieces together with my hot glue. Kind of stagger them so they're not straight across exactly. And it is so cute. Snowballs, five cents with the little bucket. And now I'm going to cover the snowballs ornament with the tool because again, I really like that little 
and snowy look. I'm just gonna trim it and I'm gonna do the same thing on the five cents. It just gives a nice cohesive look and it looks like it's been snowed on and I absolutely love it. I think it's so, so cute. So just huckling it on, trimming around the edges so it's nice and neat. And now I'm going to take my red and white acres twine and I'm going to tie one side into the snowballs and one side into the five cents. And there you go. I've got my hanger. You guys, I love this one. Let me know what you think. ornament. I'm going to use a little teeny embroidery hoop I got at Walmart and some fabric that I also got at Walmart. And I'm going to loosen up the screw at the top so I can separate the two pieces. And then I'm just going to open up my fabric and I'm going to go ahead and figure out, you know, what I need to do to get the right size. And then I'm going to trim around the outside once I kind of slip that in there, tighten the top. And that's actually the easiest way to do it is just put it in there and then cut it out instead of like tracing a circle. This is way faster. Then I just take my little scissors and I cut even more off. And I've got a bunch of these little like uh, laser cut shapes that I had ordered and so I'm looking for some that I think would be fun. So I've got a bunch of different snowflakes and then I'm going to put some bells on there. And then I'm going to put a little rocking horse in the middle and I've got a bunch of different color ribbons that coordinate with the fabric. I'm just going to make a very simple bow using like the awareness ribbon type style where you wrap it around and then pinch down the middle and tie around the center to make it tight. And I'm going to use a little bit of twine to do that. This is so easy. So, so, so easy, you guys. You could make a bunch of these all different colors and shapes and whatever. And once I have my bow the way I want it, I'm going to secure it with hot glue to the very top. And I'm going to trim the sides a little bit, kind of an angle cut. And then I'm also going to attach a little bit of twine inside where the little screw is so that I can make a hanger. So I'm just going to pull it through. I had to kind of shove it in with my, into my little scissors, tie a knot, and this one is done. Easy and so cute. Another really easy ornament. I'm using this wreath that went with this reindeer that I used for another DIY. And I'm going to use these little wood cutouts again and my linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. And what I'm going to do now as I'm showing you the paint is just awful, awful, awful. You guys, look what I did. Oh my gosh, can you believe this? Oh, I spilled my paint. Oh, it's horrible. See, I reversed it because it made me feel better, <laughs> like I got it back. Oh, I ended up just leaving it there and using it until I was done. And then I had to dig out the little cutouts and anyway, okay, moving on. I am going to paint that entire wreath in that chalk paint and then all of the little cutouts. And then I have to dig them out because they're buried in there. And then I clean up the mess and unfortunately had to waste a bunch of paint. So sad. Okay. Then I'm going to take my antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to go ahead and go over the little ornaments because I wanted them to look like stained wood. Yeah, I could have just done that from the beginning, but I like the way it looks when you put the white first. So now I'm going to hot glue little reindeer and then I'm going to put the little Christmas trees on there. And then I've got these adorable red buffalo check beads that I ordered on Amazon and I put four of those on and then some little green pine picks. And I just cut it off of another pick. And I'm hot gluing that right on there. And I mean, we're almost done. That's how easy this is. And then I'm gonna put some little baby pine cones on there. You guys, I just love how cute this is and how easy. Then I'm gonna take a bell that I already had that was green and I'm gonna put that on there and I'm gonna take a little bit of buffalo check ribbon to match the beads and tie that on and I have a hanger. Guys, that's it. So easy and absolutely adorable.
this ornament, I am going to take three of these little wood cutouts that I got at Hobby Lobby and I picked a small one, a medium one, and a little bit of a bigger one. And very carefully, I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint and linen white and I'm going to just like kind of dry brush. I mean a little heavier than dry brush, but I'm not going to like solid, solid paint over it. What I'm doing is I'm dabbing on the sides too. I just want it to look like kind of snow. And I've got this little piece of scarf and I'm going to cut off a little teeny portion of it. I'm going to take a jot marker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to make eyes and a mouth. Then I'm going to take this little berry garland and I'm going to cut one off and it's already orange. So I'm just going to hot glue it right on there. It's a perfect little nose. Now I'm going to take my buffalo check ribbon with red and black and I'm going to hot glue it along the back to attach the three pieces. Now I'm going to roll over the top of that little scarf piece because it's a little bit too thick and I'm going to wrap it around my snowman and I'm going to hot glue it down and give him a cute little scarf. And then I'm going to trim like those long tassels because obviously for this size scarf it doesn't work. And I'm going to use that ribbon to create a hanger and hot glue that down. I'm just going to make some buttons. You guys, this one is done and it's adorable and he is so easy to make. For this homemade ornament, I'm going to take one of those little wood slices from Hobby Lobby and some more of those little cutouts. I'm going to use fake snow from the Dollar Tree and a couple of little bottle brush trees also either from Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree because I got them both places and now I'm not sure which ones. So I'm going to hot glue three of the little trees right on to the top of the wood slice. I'm going to hot glue two of the little reindeer together to make it thicker and then another two because I'm going to have two reindeer standing there and now I can get them to stand up with the hot glue because they're a little bit thicker. So I've got the two of them facing one another and then I'm going to use my white chalk paint by Folk Art and I'm going to flock all the trees including the one that's already white because I want it to look like it has snow on it. I'm going to put a little bit of flocking on top of the deer and then on the bottom and then I'm going to start hot gluing this fake snow. Okay I will never use this snow again because it's like the electricity gets to it in the air tried the spray glue adhesive. I mean, it was everywhere. Oh my gosh. You can't pick it up because it sticks to everything. Anyway, wherever there was a little gap, I put some white paint and I just dried it off with my heat tool. And then I'm going to take two pieces of twine, crisscross them in front of me and lay down this slice on there. Bring up the jute pieces. This is tie them all together and I'm creating a little hanger because it's going to be a little scene that hangs on the Christmas tree. I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom to make sure the, the little twang doesn't move. You guys, I absolutely love this. I think it is just precious. This ornament is so cute and personalized. So I got these little wooden clothespins from Hobby Lobby and the little people shapes from Hobby Lobby. And I counted out enough for my husband and I and each of our kids. So he has three, I have two. And then I kind of chopped off the bottoms of some of them to align for height differences. And you don't have to do that part and sanded the bottom to make sure that it wasn't rough. So once I have all of them um, cut, I cleaned up the sawdust with my little ladybug vacuum from Amazon. Now these three little people, I'm gonna use for my dogs actually. So the clothespins are gonna be for people. My dogs are white Bichon Poodle mixes. So I painted them with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I did all three of them and dried them with my heat tool. Then I'm gonna use this mop head to create like their ears, their legs, and their tails. So I'm just gonna kind of, you know, figure out how much I need, how thick or how thin, and I separate the little you know sections there and I'm just gonna hot glue the ears on and like I said the legs and the tails I'm gonna do that for all three of my dogs now I'm only going to show you one dog because they really are all the same in terms of how I did it so there they are, all three of the pups. And now I'm gonna take my Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel and I'm gonna paint all of the people And then I'm gonna take my white wax by Waverly and go over it to lighten them up a little. I wanted them to just have like a little bit of a distressed look, but I didn't want them to be the raw wood. So there they are. And now I'm gonna figure out how I'm going to assemble them and I'm gonna hot glue the pieces together.
Now you could use E6000 and hot glue. I decided to just use the hot glue on this. I'm not too worried about it. It's not bearing any weight. So now I'm going to take a very fine marker that I have that I use for my uh, planner and I'm just going to put the animal's names on there. So Bella, Sophie, and then Shane. And you can see there I misspelled my dog's name so I had to paint white over it again and fix it. But hey, that's easy. That's not a big deal. Now I'm going to take a very fine art brush and just put all the names of the people. So we've got Belle and Julie and Steven and those are my husband's kids and then Amy and Mike are mine and then there's my husband and I on there. So there I was fixing the dog's name. Now I'm going to put Sophie in the middle standing up because she loves to stand in the prairie dog position and then I'll put Shane on one side and Bella on the other. It is so cute. I mean you could make this as gifts for other friends or family, as, you know, use as many as you need. I'm going to take my red and white baker's twine, I'm going to attach it to the back and that's it. This one's done and it is super, super cute. It looks like a door, but it doesn't have a door handle, but like a side of a cupboard maybe. It's all stark white with some really cool trim around the edges, very simple lines. I've got this little wooden Christmas tree. It was gifted to me by a family friend who also happens to be a viewer. Thank you, Jamie. And I was just looking for something to do that was very clean and simple. I wanted it to be neutral and I wanted it to be Christmas. The back already has some holes in it, which is something, and it only cost a dollar. I printed out some words of a song with my Cricut and I cleaned up the whole thing with crud cutter. And then I'm going to just use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. And I got that really cool wood glue holder on Amazon. Kind of cool because I can put whatever glue I want in it. You know, I can get the best price and then fill it up. Anyway, I'm taking a brush and spreading the glue around except for the very edges, which is where I'm going to put the hot glue. And then I'm going to stick it right in the center of that flatter cutout area. Now I'm going to take my vinyl that I printed the words on. It's to the song, Oh Christmas Tree. And you could do this with stickers. You could freehand write it. If you have nice handwriting, you could do transfers, stencils, whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape that on there, remove the transfer tape, and so across the top it's going to say, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Then you'll go down the right side, it's going to say, how lovely are thy branches. And then the bottom it's going to say, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree again. And up the left side it's going to say, how lovely are thy branches. And I just think that is so, so cute. That's how easy this particular thrift flip was. I very lightly dry brushed the tree with a little bit of white just so it would match some other wood pieces. That's it. The holes in the back can be used to hang it. I don't have to do anything else to this one. And I absolutely love it. It's festive, clean, neutral, and so easy. And it literally cost me a dollar plus a little bit of vinyl. Oh my gosh, just doesn't get any easier than that. I hope you guys really like it as much as I do. thrifted item is very unusual. It kind of looks like half of a spool, but then it's got this weird kind of wood thing sticking out. I have no idea what it really is. If you know, let me know in the comments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece off. Now I thought it would just unscrew. There are screws on the bottom and then I would just lift it off. And that is true. However, it was still stuck as well. So I don't know if they glued it. I'm not sure how this was assembled, but those screws did not do anything. Did not loosen anything. I tried using a little spatula thing in there and then I got my tin snip out that I got on Amazon. I finally just had to like cut each side of those two pieces until it got loose enough and then I just used a little utility blade to get the rest of it off. I don't know what the deal was. It was on there for life but spoiler alert I got rid of it. <laughs> but I'm gonna use it because I think that piece has potential but not right now. 
Right now I'm going to take that spool looking thing and I'm going to take these two artificial little mini Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. They're white and I'm going to put those together to make one little bit fuller tree. First thing I'm going to do is clean that wood piece up with some crud cutter. And it's funny how it dirty it is, but you can't tell when you just look at it, but oh, it came back really dirty. And now I'm sanding it and clipping off these little teeny points that were sticking out from where I tried to cut it off. I don't want anything to be sharp on the back. I'm going to take this warm buff acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and I'm just going to go over the whole thing almost like a dry brush. So a little heavier than a dry brush where you put some on your brush, wipe some off, and then drag it across your piece. But I'm going to add a little more than just a light dry brushing. I'm loving the way it looks. I wanted this wood to match other wood that I was working with. And then I'm going to do a little whitewash with my white chalk paint. I'm going to do definitely more of a dry brush with that. And I love the look. It's almost like a blonde wood or almost a coastal kind of a looking driftwood. But it's exactly what I was going for. I needed it to match. And there it is. And I love how that turned out. Looks like a different piece now. I'm going to get those trees out of the boxes, remove the legs, and I'll get rid of that little white piece at the end. It just pulls right off. And now I've got these two trees. So I'm going to open one up. I'm going to keep the back of it flat. And I'm going to fluff out the rest of to the side and forward. And then I'm going to take the other one and kind of do the same thing, but I'm going to put them together and there's still going to be one flat side. So you'll see. They're kind of sparse, these little trees, so you almost always have to put at least one or two uh, extra ones together and take some little zip ties. I'm going to pick the white ones so you won't notice them. And I'm going to attach the two at that metal pole that's in the center of them. I'm going to do, I think I did three or four of them. I want to make sure this thing doesn't move at all. And once I get them, I put them on loose. And then once I get the, everything where I want it, I adjust it. And then I pull each zip tie tighter and I snip off the ends. If you're on social media, come find me at either Instagram, Pinterest, or Facebook. Same name. And also, if you make anything that I inspired you to make, I'd love to see a picture. Now, going back to our wood piece, I want to make a stand for this tree. So the problem is those little poles in the middle of the trees are hollow. They're metal, but there's nothing in the center. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm drawing some circles right now because I need to drill a hole, actually two holes because there's two of those poles. So I'm going to drill and I realized it wasn't big enough. So I had to switch my drill bit and drill another one. And then I'm going to take two little dowels that I had from a bookshelf that I put together. There were extra ones. So I'm going to stick those in there nice and secure. And then I can set those two poles right over the top of them because they'll go right in those holes. And it's the perfect stable stand. I put a little bit of hot glue at the bottom there to make sure that it wouldn't go anywhere. And I mean, it's not, it's on there really nice. And I'm very happy with that as a solution for this. I'm gonna take some rope or twine that I got at Walmart and I'm gonna put one just around the very bottom where it meets the trim and then one up at the top where it meets the trim. I'm gonna hot glue that on there. And I think that's just a nice little accent. Trim away some of the little fuzzies. Then in that spot right there where it's metal and it's showing, I'm going to just take the same jute and wrap it around. And I'll use hot glue to secure it there. Now I've got this really cool burlap kind of thick ribbon from burlapfabric.com. I'll put a link for that and their website in the description box. It's really high quality. I'm going to cut out some pieces to put on the back to cover it. And it's also going to end up being up against like a wall or something. So I don't want it to scratch anything. So I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't. I'm going to take a blade and trim away some of those little pieces. I've got a little cutting mat underneath and I also use my mini scissors to do that as well. And I'm very happy with how it looks now. And I feel like the back is protected from scratching anything. I take all different kinds of burlap and lace ribbons, a really pretty one that has kind of the holes in it. That's also from burlapfabric.com and I'll link that as well. It's gorgeous and it's got wire in it. And I'm just going to cut six inch pieces and I'm just going to take the biggest ones first and lay them down crisscross and then the smallest. And then I'm going to grab in the middle and cinch it. And then I'm going to take a piece of jute twine and wrap it around as tightly as I can. And then I will knot it off and then wrap it around some more and knot it off. I just want to make sure that that middle of the bow is pulled very tight. This is a messy bow, one of the easiest bows ever, and I love the way it looks. Mm -hmm. 
makes it just so fun. And then you spend a bunch of time fluffing it, making sure the ribbons are right where you want them. Now that I'm getting it all fluffed the way I like, I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue it right there on that twine that's wrapped around the metal. And that finishes this piece off and I am super happy with it. And you can add something to the center or just the twine can be good enough. It's up to you. The last thing I want to do is put something on the bottom so it doesn't scratch anything. I'm going to use this shelf liner from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gluing it right on with the hot glue and then I'm going to trim around the bottom and that's it. And it's perfect. It won't move anywhere once you place it. I am loving this piece. It's neutral. It's Christmas. And I just think it looks awesome. Let me know what you think. DIY are these tiles that are from the Habitat for Humanity Restore. We each have a different set of them, but they're all tiles. This little, I don't know, two-pronged piece of wood came off of another thrift flip and it wasn't going to work for that. So I have it now and I'm going to sand it down with my orbital sander and then I am going to get my miter shears that I got from Amazon and I'm going to use some paint stir sticks to try to fill in where that one side doesn't have a piece. And I'm using my large staple gun. The problem is that this wasn't that thick so it went all the way through but I did clip off those pointy ends that were sticking out and then I'm going to measure and cut a couple more pieces of the paint stir sticks to fill in another spot because there was like a gap of thickness so I'm putting that there and I didn't want it to look funny so I made one for the other side as well and they just fit right down in there and I just take my hammer and I tap it lightly and it just fits right in which was awesome I'm just gonna staple that from the back right in the middle there on each side. And then I'm just gonna use my little snips and take off those points again. And it works just fine. So it's nice and stable. And this isn't gonna be bearing a lot of weight. Then I found this Rust-Oleum gel stain at the Dollar Tree of all places. I didn't even know they had stain. What I'm trying to do is get those two pieces of the paint stir sticks to kind of match the other wood. And then I'm gonna treat the wood to match some other pieces that it's, so it's not gonna look anything like this, but I got kind of close. I've got this MDF board that I got in the free scrap pile at Lowe's a while back. So I just cut a piece that would fit perfectly on the back. You could use foam board or anything. And then I traced out that opening in what we'll call now the frame. I'm gonna get my tiles and I'm just figuring out how I wanna place them. It doesn't really matter because I'm actually gonna paint over these little tiles here. So I just wanna make sure that they fit in that rectangle opening, which they do. And once I figure that out, I'm going to hot glue them all down and just make sure they're as tight as possible. I'm not going to be doing grouting or anything like that. This is just to give texture. I'm not really using the tile in the traditional way. I have tons left so I can do other things. And I'm going to fill in a little gap with some skewers from the Dollar Tree. You won't even see them because there's going to be something covering them, but I just needed something in there to kind of be a placeholder, if you will. So I just cut some pieces and hot glue them around the edges. And then when I put that little frame that I made back on, it fits better. Now I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and I'm going to go over all the tiles and then around the edges and sides. And then I'm going to go back and go the crossways because I love that textured look. So there it is, all painted. And now I'm going to glue the little frame that wasn't a frame but is now a frame right to the top. I'm going to take some rope from Walmart and I'm just going to fill in that gap. And I've got those three little Christmas tree cutouts that I got from Dollar Tree. And it's just going to be super cute. I'm not even going to change the wood. I'm not going to stain it or paint it or anything. I'm just hot gluing it right on there as it is. Now, I forgot to film the part where I made the wood match some other projects. I just used some warm buff and a little bit of white paint and dry brushed it. I've got some little pine picks that were left over from something probably from Walmart. I'm gonna take a little piece of burlap and just gonna literally tie a knot in the middle. 
I'm going to pull off some of those crosshair pieces and it's gonna then look like just little strands. And so it kind of looks like a bow. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue that right in the center. And I just, I was going for something super simple. I thought about the pine cones, but it was just too much. And this I really like. And then I put some jute uh, rope around the back and then I hot glued that down, finish the back off with some craft paper and then put a little burlap over the rope just to make it look cleaner. There you go, you can see the end. And that's it, it was so fun and I love it. You have to tell me what you think. I am using some science from the Dollar Tree along with some wood I had at home and also a couple things I got at Family Dollar but all real cheap. There were some scraps and then this was something I made a DIY with and then decided not to use it. Those are my miter shears from Amazon. They are easy, easy to use for this kind of wood. I'm going to take the twine out of this sign because I'm going to be cutting it down into a little, I don't know, almost a square. I'm going to make any cuts that I need right now. And it's always fun using my jigsaw. And now I'm gonna paint all the pieces with my linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Once they're done, I'm gonna take this little square piece of scrapbook paper and I'm going to put some Mod Podge inside this little box and put it in there. And that's gonna be the trunk of our tree. We're making a Merry Christmas tree. I'm also gonna put Mod Podge over all the front of the pieces of wood. And then I use my Cricut and I cut out some words. So on the top of the tree, it's gonna say, we, And then on the next plank, it's gonna say wish. And on this one, it's gonna say U, A. And then I have the Mary one from Dollar Tree. And then on the bottom one, it's gonna say Christmas. So it's like a plank tree saying, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'm gonna use combinations of hot glue and E6000 to attach all the pieces and also some little nails. And then I needed something to secure those little thin pieces together. So I'm using these little beads from the Dollar Tree. They actually work really well with E6000 and hot glue to hold some pieces together. And then we're gonna work on some bracing for the back because this is gonna be a lot of stuff and it's kind of tall actually. So we need to make sure, and I'm gonna mark the spots where things are gonna go. And these are heavier pieces, the Mary and the Christmas plank. So I'm gonna use a lot of E6000 on that one and make sure it really sets up because I don't want this thing to fall apart. I saw an ornament on Pinterest. This was inspired by Pinterest. And I decided to make an actual tree like this instead of just a Christmas ornament. And of course I added my own embellishments to it. And now I'm using some paint stir sticks to reinforce the back and give it more strength. Then it'll kind of look like a tree trunk in the center there. And I'm gonna do several nails on that. And then I'm also going to paint it white so that every, everything looks good even on the front and the back. Now I've got these little stars from the Dollar Tree. I painted them white first and now I'm gonna use my metallic silver from Folk Art. I'm gonna hot glue them together. And I'll paint around the edges with the silver. And then I'm gonna start bracing some more things on the back because I feel like just a little in, unstable and I wanna make sure that it fits. So I'm using scrap wood and stir stick pieces to do that as you can see here. And it really makes up for a very strong base and I'm even gonna hammer some of those in, not just hot glue them, if the piece is thick enough to withstand that. And I'm gonna take these little beads that I also painted with the silver and I'm gonna put some little, um, some hot glue on the inside and attach two corners or points of the star. And then I'm gonna get some stir, um, some skewer sticks, sorry, from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put those inside with glue and then I'm going to paint those white and hot glue them to the very top of the tree. And that gives for a really nice stable star at the very top. And here we have a white tree with silver embellishments. And it's very much, we wish you a Merry Christmas and it's a white Christmas. I hope you guys like it.
for this DIY, I've got this little sign from, I think it's the Dollar Tree, it says Believe, a little ornament, reindeer head, snowflakes, bottle brush trees, and a foam wreath, and then that white towel from the automotive section. I'm gonna use my white chalk paint, and I'm gonna paint all around those words, and then use this brushed metal gold paint from Folk Art to paint over the top. I just didn't like exactly the way that gold look that was on there. I'm gonna change it again anyway. And then I'm gonna flock all three of these trees, and get them ready to place on the wreath when we make it. And I'm gonna layer my little snowflakes. I cut out the center of that white one and you see it on the left there. I'm gonna end up putting it on the back so it shows through. And I just thought that made it look even cuter. And then I'm gonna take off those red berries because we are doing white Christmas. And I'm gonna put some silver on his little bell. And then I'm gonna flock his little wreath around his neck or what garland around his neck. Now I'm gonna take my foam wreath form and my little white towel, and I'm gonna cut some slits in the middle, and I'm gonna start hot gluing it, but I end up cutting a lot of this off until I can wrap it. I don't want it to be super bulky and bumpy, which is hard to do. Um, I could have done strips, but then it frays really bad, so I was trying to minimize the amount of fraying that would be kind of on an open end. So I'm just gonna let you watch as I cut and tuck and glue until I get it all covered. It's kind of hard to describe how to do it, so you'll see what I did. I cut little like slits. If you have an easier way, I would definitely do that. I have never covered a foam wreath like this in fabric, so I'm sure that there is a better way, but it worked. It got the job done, and that was all that I was concerned about. And as long as the front looked good, that's what mattered to me, because it's gonna be all white no matter what. There it is. I think it looks pretty good on the front. Now I'm gonna make a hanger before I add anything else to it. I'm gonna take some of this mop head and I'm gonna cut a piece and I'm just going to hot glue it right at the top where I've decided the top is. I'm gonna hot glue each of the ends and then I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of the faux leather from Dollar Tree and just hot glue a little like rectangle piece to the end though so that they don't kind of start fraying apart because the mop heads do tend to do that. And plus it's white and I think it looks nice and it kind of finishes it off. to do is turn it over and I'm going to put my little snowflakes up towards the kind of right upper side. I'm just going to hot glue that. It sticks really well to that towel. Then I'm going to start putting my little trees. I'm going to have to hold it up because I want them standing up in the center like a little scene. So once I figure that out, I will hot glue those down and they stay really well next to each other because of the bottle brush aspect. They kind of intertwine a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my reindeer ornament head and I'm gonna put him on the inside like a profile and I think that looks super cute. Now I put the third tree on and then I took it off because it was gonna be blocked by my sign. So I kind of put it towards the back in between the two trees so you just see it poking up. Now I'm gonna take my Believe sign because I still wasn't happy with it. I'm gonna put Mod Podge all over that and I'm gonna put some silver glitter on it and I think that just does the trick. It makes it look very snowy and festive and I'm not a big glitter fan, but I do think that's what this one needed. So once I get that all on there, I'm gonna paint the back white because I hadn't done that yet. And now I'm gonna figure out the placement on the front of my wreath and I'm gonna attach some more of that mop head to it with a really good strong uh, amount of hot glue and I'm gonna put a little more of that faux leather over each of those ends to hold it in place. The same exact thing on the other side, so they're both attached to the sign, and then I'm going to put the sign on with hot glue and it stays very well, but I have another way I'm gonna secure it and I'll show you that in just one minute here. Okay, turn the wreath over and I'm gonna take the remaining part of the strand of the mop head and I'm going to glue it all the way up to where the hanger is. And that just really secures that sign. So I'm super happy with this, you guys. It's so cute, I hope you like it.
ready for a very easy DIY. I've got this little, I think it's a beer flight board. I got it at um, Target Dollar Spot for $5. Took off the little leather handle or tie. And I'm gonna paint the whole thing front and back and the sides with the white chalk paint from Mustolian, the linen white. And when that is done, then I'm going to use a white hanger instead that I had left over from another project. And I'll just add that to the top. Then um, for the O, I'm going to do the word snow, I'm going to use that white piece of a snowflake and then this little wood cutout of a snowflake. And then I have a little silver one and these are all different things that came from different places and I just decided to put them together and I thought that layering effect looked really, really cute. Then I have some stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to spell out the S, N, and the W, but I'm going to lay some Mod Podge down first so it's a nice smooth surface. Inside those circles it was kind of rough, so um, I'm just going to do that to make sure that the letters have something nice to stick to. And then I'll cover each letter with Mod Podge as well. And then to finish this off, I have two bells that I got last year from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take that little silver tie that's on each one and feed it through the hole and then tie them together. And I'm gonna hot glue them in place on the back and the front. And then I'm gonna put another one of those little white snowflakes over the back to cover up where I cut off the pieces and hot glued them down, which is a nice little finishing touch. And what a cute little snow sign with the bells. I absolutely love it. Talk about an easy DIY. Are you ready for a super easy DIY? <laughs> Just like before, I've got those letters that spell out joy. I think those, well, those are gifted to me by a friend. I cut some of those pieces off of that white rag I used for another project and I had this metal ornament from the Dollar Tree. And literally, I'm going to hot glue these stripes on across the front of the ornament and then bring them around the back and hot glue and just cut off the ends till they meet and add some little snow stripes, if you will. want to remind you that there will be a playlist link for this get together on YouTube. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas so you can go watch all of the other videos that my talented friends have made and don't forget to go see Devin at the Freckled Mom DIY. She does all kinds of different things and she is just a fireball of energy. I just love her and she's so much fun so I know you will really enjoy her. I know she also does chalk couture so there'll be some things on her channel that are different than on mine and uh, you might like that if you, especially if it's stenciling is challenging, which it is for a lot of people. So definitely go check out Devin's channel and I'll have everybody's links down in my description box, of course. Okay, so here's my question for today. Do you decorate before Thanksgiving or do you start decorating the day after Thanksgiving? The day that I'm recording this is the day after Thanksgiving. I meant to start mine November 1st and I got so busy that it looks like it is going to be today as it turns out, but I'm really curious to hear what everybody else does. So leave that down in the comment section and let me know and we'll see uh, what kind of majority we get here on that. I'm very, very curious. If you are on social media, I am on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook with the same name as my channel. Come find me. And also, if you like to watch videos while you craft, I have the mega video playlist down in my description box for you. Now all that's left to do is glue on our letters and I'm just using my hot glue for that and they stick very well to that towel and after I get the O on I'm going to put that little snowflake right on the middle but I'm going to use a Mod Podge to do that because it's just made out of paper and hot glue is going to make it like kind of bubbly I think so I'm going to lay the Mod Podge around the letter O 
and then put the snowflake on top and then touch up the edges to make sure that it stays nice. And that is it for this one. It is done. It's so cute and it was so easy. You could make this in just a couple of minutes, honestly. It was just a piece of cake. And I hope you really enjoyed it like I did. For this DIY, I'm using this adorable little sled I got at the Target Dollar Spot for $5. I am also going to use these evergreen picks that I got on Amazon, and they are such a great deal. And then these are some Dollar Tree picks or pieces from a pick, as are the next ones I'm going to show you with the frosted and the little snow balls on them. And then I've got these little pine cones. I think I got those at Dollar Tree too. Now I'm going to sand all around every possible edge on this and you can see here now including the back because I wanted to give it a bit of a distressed look but I am going to dry brush it with white everywhere that I have sanded and then a little bit in all the other spots as well and I think that just makes it look like it has a little bit of snow on it and that's what I wanted. Now here it is all distressed and I love the way it looks. Next, I'm going to take these three evergreen picks and see exactly how wide they should be to fit on my sled. And I use a little bit of jute twine and tie the three together so that they hold in place while I work on them. And then I'll just cut off the extra twine. I'm going to take those Dollar Tree picks and position them where I want them and hot glue them on. Now, this is something that you can completely customize to your own style, whatever you have on hand. And so it doesn't have to look just like this if you decide to recreate it. This is just the way I thought it looked good. So just some inspiration. Once I get all three or four of those pieces on, I'm ready to move on to the other little picks. And I'm just going to, like I said, put them wherever I think they would look good. And I'm using hot glue to attach them. Next, I'm going to place my little pine cones. And I just, I love these little pine cones. They are so cute. And they're already a little bit flocked, but I will do more later. These kind of things you really have to hold for a second to let the hot glue set up. Otherwise they kind of fall. <laughs> so you gotta wait. Now I've got these snowballs that a friend gifted me and I'm gonna place them just kind of randomly all around. And then I'm gonna take my little baby snowballs and I'm gonna also place them wherever cause I want it to look like snow has just fallen all over this little swag. Now I'm gonna take my linen white chalk paint and I'm gonna flock everything. And look at that, doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I love it. Now I'm gonna figure out where exactly I'm going to attach it on the sled. I know I want it up high because I want you to still be able to see most of the sled and the snowflake. Before I attach that with hot glue, I'm gonna get my little bow maker out and I'm gonna use about four or five different ribbons that I think will look really pretty with this. And I'm just gonna use my bow maker and wrap it around back and forth and back and forth until I get a big full bow worth of ribbon. I'm not a great bow maker, so that's why I have a bow maker. I got it on Amazon. And even with the bow maker, I could still use some help. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the bows because it's just not the thing that I do the best. So I don't wanna lead you astray. There are many other channels that do amazing bows and maybe someday I'll get there too. Once I have all the ribbon on, I'm gonna take a black zip tie put it underneath the middle, and then I'm gonna pull it, but not super tight until I remove it from the bow maker. So I'm gonna pull out my little pegs, and then I'm going to take the bow off, and then I'm gonna position it better, and then I will pull the little zip tie as tight as I possibly can. And then I'll trim off that little excess piece on the zip tie. Now there's my bow before I fluff it. And I start fluffing it. The thing is you have to fluff it more than one time. So I'm fluffing it right now just to see what it might look like. And then I'm gonna fluff it again. There's the first round of fluffing. And then I'm gonna wrap a piece of that really pretty black ribbon with the silver squirrely things on it. Just gonna wrap a little piece around the center to cover the zip tie and make it look like it has a nice little pretty center. I'm just gonna hot glue that right on there. Nobody will ever know. And then once that is fully secured, it looks so pretty in the middle to have that kind of finished off look. I really love that. 
If you like to watch videos while you craft, I have a mega video playlist down in my description box and you should check that out. Now I'm going to fluff again, just because I put that center on and that kind of threw things off. I'm going to dovetail the ends of every single ribbon that's hanging down. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach my little swag to the very top of the sled using a generous amount of hot glue and holding it for a while. I'm also going to hot glue my bow right there on top of that swag. And then I fluffed it again and kind of did a little tweaking and there is the bow. And then on the back, back in the holes, I had removed some jute twine. I'm going to add some white mop head strand because it matches and I'm going to tie a couple knots and attach it to both sides. You guys, I love how this turned out. It's so pretty. DIY, I was using a styrofoam cone that I got on Amazon and I spray painted it with an emerald green spray paint and I'm going to use some potpourri, two different kinds from the Dollar Tree. And by the way, this was a craft that I did with the styrofoam cones with the senior group recently and they loved it. I'm going to hot glue different kinds of potpourri all around. I'm going to kind of make patterns. If you do this, you can do any pattern you want, any scent of potpourri, whatever you want. I'm going to poke a hole in the top and I'm going to add this little, um, I don't know what it is, but this little piece of something. I end up taking it out because it looks too small. And now I'm going to add in the other potpourri because I love all the different colors and scents and they go together so well. One of the cool things you could do with this is put it in your bathroom because you can smell the scent of the potpourri. So if you want to decorate your bathroom for Christmas. This would be a really functional way to do it. It's like having an air freshener. And I'm just going to continue with whatever pattern I decide to do. I kind of pick through them and find kind of like pieces and then I go around and do my rows based on whatever pattern I, I decided you know for that. So I'm not going to make you watch me do all of it because it took a little while but I'll just kind of periodically stop and show you what's going on and you can just see. But honestly, you could do this any way you want. Some of these had little like strands of, I don't know, fiber. So I had to kind of trim it up but just a little bit. It's not really that big of a deal though. It's so nature inspired and it's so beautiful. It's very non-traditional, but I really love it because the potpourri becomes the ornaments on the tree and that is so much fun. And now that I got to the top, I'm so happy with it, but that little top piece just isn't cutting it. So I am going to pull it out. Of course, when I do, I rip some of the styrofoam because it was hot glued, but that's okay because I'm going to use this larger pine cone, which is more proportionate to this piece. I'm just going to trim around the top so it's a little more flat, and then I'm going to hot glue that pine cone on there, hold it for a bit to make sure it really stays. Are you guys over on social media? You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Hope to see you there. I think this looks so much better. I'm glad I decided to change it. That other one was just way too small. Now I want to have a base. So I'm going to take this wood slice that I got from Hobby Lobby and some wood glue and that container I got on Amazon. It's really nice. You can put really uh, inexpensive glue in there and then use it for a long time. And then I'm going to add some hot glue as well so that I can get it to hold right away while I wait for the wood glue to set up. I'm just going to set it right on top, press it down firmly, and then I have this adorable base. You guys, I love this. It's just so sweet and, you know, full of nature. And let me tell you, it smells so good. I'm going to use this little non-slip pad that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to hot glue it to the bottom because that way if it is in the bathroom and it gets wet, it won't affect the wood. It'll have a base there. So I just hot glued that on. And then I took my little scissors and I just cut all the way around. And really that's it. This one is done. It's so pretty. It's functional and it's the nicest air freshener I may have ever seen if I don't say so myself. <laughs>
This DIY is super easy. I got this house from the Target Dollar Spot. It was a set of three. I'm gonna use this placemat from Dollar General and that little wood slice. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna trace around and cut out the shape of the house onto the back of the placemat. And I'm gonna use my little rotary cutter from Dollar Tree and also uh, off camera some scissors just to trim it up even more. Then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue it right onto the very top of the house. Then I'm going to take my little scissors and cut around the edges and just trim any excess. I got it pretty close, but there's always a little bit that you miss. So I just went ahead and, and took care of that. Then I'm going to take my little wood round and this little window cling from the Dollar Tree. I am going to trim it even more. And I'm going to put Mod Podge first on top of the wood slice because, you know, they're pretty rough. And I just want to try to fill in some of those little, you know, rough pieces so that the window cling will go on nicely. I'm going to put that right on top and then add Mod Podge to the top to seal it in. And it's just so cute. Of course, when it dries, it is clear so you can see the little tree when it's all done. There it is. And now I'm going to kind of decide where I might want to place it, which I decide on the very center. But I feel like it still needs something a little more, even though it's super easy. And I've got this little bell garland that I got, I think it was from Hobby Lobby or Dollar General, I'm not sure. And I'm going to wrap it around several times and hot glue it periodically just to surround the little wood slice because I think it looks so so cute and festive. Then I'm going to take some faux leather that's from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use the brown and I'm going to hot glue that all the way around and I'm going to have the seams meet right in the center of the front because the wood slice will cover it. So I'm just going to hot glue at every little corner. I don't want to put a lot because you can kind of see the bumps through the faux leather. So if you just put it like a little dab right where you need it and kind of flatten it out, then you won't see like a little bump every time you have put the glue somewhere. And I'm leaving the back and the sides natural wood because I just think that that looks really really cool with this especially with the wood slice it's just very very rustic and now that I've got my little faux leather on I'm gonna trim that there's a little bit of excess and then I will just attach it right there in the center and then all that's left to do is glue on the wood slice to the top I'm gonna use quite a bit of hot glue because I want to make sure that this stays but I don't think it really requires e6000 because it's not bearing any weight and I think this turned out super cute. It was very easy. Well, I hope you guys like it. I found this little tree at Salvation Army and although it is very cute I just wanted to do something different it only cost $1.99 but it was also on a discount so it was less than that I'm gonna cut off that ribbon because I couldn't unknot it no matter what I did <laughs> but that's okay I might still be able to use it and then I'm going to use my crud cutter and clean it off because you know it was at a thrift store then I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to take apart the two pieces. It was just a screw and that way I can paint everything and not worry about, you know, how I'm going to make that work. I'm going to take the tree, I'm going to paint it white or linen white with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I'm going to do two coats of that to make sure I cover that green really well. And there it is. And I could have just left it like that, it's so pretty. Now I'm going to take the base and I'm also going to paint that white and that's more of a base they're both as, as a base coat because i needed to cover up the darker and then i'm going to you know paint them different colors i'm going to take the little base and i'm going to use my fern chalk paint by waverly and i'm going to paint that i just think that color is so pretty and then with the tree i tried doing red polka dots and i did not like the way it looked so i painted it all over with red and it's called flag by folk art I'm gonna put the pieces back together. And again, I could have stopped right here. It's just very pretty and festive, but I did wanna do some more. So I've got this bell garland that I got from Dollar General, I'm pretty sure. And I just wrapped it around and glued it here and there just to make it stick where I wanted it to. You know, just like a garland on a tree. Then I'm gonna take these two bells. Unfortunately, one was silver and one was white. So I'm going to use some jute twine. I'm gonna tie them through their loops and then attach them to the very top with hot glue and wrap the twine around a few times to make it really secure. 
And then I'm going to take some silver metallic paint from Folk Art and I'm gonna paint the white one and make it silver. And then I'm also gonna go over the top of the silver one so that they match. And I did do a couple coats because it does take a little bit. I've got this Joy ornament. I believe it's from the Dollar Tree. And I've got the staple remover I got off Amazon that works really well for these things. And I'm gonna take off the little staples and the twine. And I'm gonna use my Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel and paint the back, because you will see it. And you know, I just feel like I had to do that. And then I'm gonna hot glue it directly to the very base of the tree. And then I'm gonna add another bell, but this time I'm gonna leave it silver because it's not right next to the other bells. And then I'm gonna add some little berries and just, it will be so cute when it's all done. And honestly, that's it, it's that easy. I love this, it's very festive, but as easy as can be. this project I'm going to use this piece of scrap wood I'm not even sure where I got it but there it is I've got a dowel that I bought at Home Depot and then I've got these three ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I've got these little um, screw-in like hook eyes I think they're called I don't know and then these two merry and bright signs from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue them together to make it more sturdy because these are super super thin so I'm going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and I love that container I got that on Amazon and it just holds a lot of my glue that's less expensive so I can just keep filling it up and I love that so much if I mention that I got something at Amazon there will be a link in my description box for my Amazon store and you can find it there if it's something that you need to so I'm just going to put some dots of hot glue around the wood glue and then I'm going to put them right together and squeeze. And if I found any spots that didn't stick, I'll add a little more hot glue and just kind of make sure it sticks. I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint to cover both sides and the edges of this. There you go, all painted and ready to go. Now I'm gonna sand this piece of scrap wood and I used my jigsaw to cut it, but I had to do it outside so I didn't film it. And now I'm gonna use that same paint and I'm gonna paint the whole thing. And it only takes about one and a half coats. There it is, looks great. Now I'm gonna paint the dowel, but first I'm gonna use my miter shears from Amazon and I'm gonna cut it. Now it looks like it's hard for me to do. It's not, I just didn't want it to fly off the table. So I was going really slow so it wouldn't, but it really was like no big deal to do that at all. So now I'm gonna see if I put them inside that big gap there will my sign fit in there nicely and yes it will that's what I was trying to do and so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint those to match everything's gonna be white hence white Christmas I'm gonna take my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and something another uh, nail sand nail file I'm gonna distress and sand around now I'm gonna take my hot glue I'm gonna put a lot of hot glue and I'm gonna set down my little dowel one on each side and that way I will create that smaller gap to place my sign in I hope you'll come find me on social media. I am on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook, same name. Please come see me and say hi. And now I'm gonna take that nail file and I'm gonna go around and distress the edges even more. I just like the way it looks. Um, I, You know, it's funny, this one has a glam element to it, but I also like the wood to be slightly distressed and I didn't wanna do it with paint. I wanted it to be more subtle and natural. So that's what I'm doing. There you go, now you can see all the edges. I just really like that. I did a little in the middle of the sections too. So now I'm gonna take my little eyes and I'm gonna figure out with my ruler where exactly the middle is and then I'm gonna measure where to put the other ones. So I just kind of twisted in, made the holes and there they are. Just took a little bit of muscle, actually not much at all. I didn't pre-drill holes. So now I'm setting my Mary and Bright side in there and I'm going to use hot glue and a lot of hot glue because I want this to stay standing up and it wasn't like a fully tight fit, but with the hot glue that fills in the gap, no problem. So I'm gonna go through and start off and just get some in there. And then once I have that part dry, I can let go of the little sign and start filling in some more hot glue to make it even more stable. And that's what I do. And I took a little bit of mop head and just filled in that one little spot because I thought that looked kind of nice and I didn't want to see any gap there. I did that on both sides. 
So now I'm going to take my ornaments and I'm going to use these silver little um, ties that came with some of the ornaments from Dollar Tree. I'm going to tie it through the hole in the ornament and then through my little hook eyes. And I'm going to tie a double knot. I do add a dab of hot glue there to make sure that knot doesn't come out. I'm going to trim those little pieces and then I'm going to hide the knot into the ornament itself. See, I'm sliding it down right there and I put it right inside there. And I actually do put a little glue there too just to keep it there. So all three of them I put on the exact same way and the middle one hangs a little lower which I love. And then I'm going to take these sawtooth hangers that I ordered on Amazon. I got them in different sizes. I'm going to use my little pokey tool from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start a little hole and then I'll take my drill and find the right size bit for these screws and I'm just going to drill them straight in. I am using a level because I'm trying to make sure that the whole thing is level across so it doesn't hang crooked. I ordered these little fairy lights on Amazon. They came six I think in a pack and um, I'm just going to hot glue that little controller to the back. They don't need regular batteries. They already come with them and then I'm going to start wrapping the fairy lights around just what, however you want like whatever you think looks good because I can't really say how you should do it. I, this is what I did. Just tried to get it and I love this one you guys. It's so pretty. I saw something similar to this on Pinterest. I knew I had to make it my own version. So I've got these three pieces of scrap wood. I did cut them with my jigsaw off camera. Now they have these holes in them and I could use wood filler, but I have this little trick where I put a piece of tape on the back and then I fill it with hot glue. And when it dries, I just sand off that little bump. It works so well. Anyway, I'm gonna sand them all with my um, sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and I'm gonna paint all three of these pieces. And now I'm showing you where the glue was filled and you can barely even notice it. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Now I'm gonna take a little nail file from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go around every edge of these three pieces and I just love the way that distresses. It's just like the perfect amount and it's just a natural looking distress like they're worn and I just love that look so much. I love to watch crafting videos while I craft. So if you do too, I have a mega playlist that so you might wanna check out in my description box. And now they are all done. Don't they look great with that? I just, I love that technique. Anyway, uh, now what I'm going to do is I have a little base for them. It's just a little piece from um, Dollar Tree and I'm gonna sand that down. And then I'm gonna also paint it with the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint, but I'm gonna very lightly dry brush over the top. I am gonna go around the edges a teeny bit heavier, but I'm not even gonna do the bottom. You can kind of see how it looks. It's just enough. I didn't want it to be solid white like the rest. I wanted a little contrast. I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to go ahead and attach all three of these pieces of wood. They are now my candles, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and hold it till the hot glue sets up and then I can let go and the E6000 will eventually dry. And I'm going to do that with all three of my candle pieces. And now you can see how they look on there. I'm gonna grab some little greeneries that I got on Amazon. I'm just gonna take two pieces, they're like little evergreens. I'm gonna snip off the extra piece on the end there because I don't need that much. And I'm gonna figure out exactly how wide I want them to be by placing them up against the candles. I'm gonna get some jute twine and be ready to tie them together. Now that I have them where I want, I'm just gonna wrap the jute twine around several times, tie a knot, wrap it again, tie another knot, and then trim off the excess pieces. I like doing that because it just holds it together and it also gives you a nice place to glue something for the center if you want to. Next, I'm gonna take my chalk paint again and I'm going to flock this greenery. I love doing this because I love that the green still pokes through, but you just get it kind of on the edges and I go all the way around every part of it. Doesn't that look pretty? Now I'm going to place it on the front of my three cans 
candles right on that base and I'm gonna use hot glue, a lot of hot glue. And then I'm gonna hold it in place because sometimes if you don't with something like this, it doesn't fully attach because you know the greenery is not a solid piece, but there it is. Now I'm gonna take a mop head. Uh, you can tell I've used this one quite a bit and I'm gonna pull out a strand and then I'm gonna cut three little pieces, but first I'm gonna hot glue kind of the pieces that are loose because I want them to stay together for this. So then I'm gonna cut three pieces and these are gonna become my candle wicks. So I'm gonna glue both ends of them, make a little point on the one end that's like the top of the flame, and then I'm going to use an Arteza paint marker. I think it's the lemon yellow paint marker. You'll see it here in a second. And I'm gonna paint most of this little candle wick with the yellow and just a little bit on the bottom will still be white where it hasn't burned yet, if you will. There's the marker and here I am painting right on top. I thought this was a cute way to create a flame without a flame. I'm gonna do three of these and then I'm going to attach them directly to the top middle of each candle like I am right here with the hot glue and just kind of make sure they're facing upward and then I've got my cute little candle wicks. Oh my gosh, it looks so adorable. Ignore those little ornaments on there. I took them off, I did not like it. Instead, I'm using these pine cones. I'm gonna flock them. I'm gonna put five pine cones on there, one larger one, and then a bunch of little ones around it. I wanted to keep this a little more rustic and those little ornaments just glammed it up too much. I love this one, you guys. It's very simple, not a lot of embellishments, but just enough. is so easy. So I've got this gorgeous kind of vase that was some flowers that my brother sent me. And I've got these bottle brush trees and I've got a couple of ornaments and I've got this Epsom salt and then I've got some uh, glitter and some snow, snow from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna clean my container with some rubbing alcohol. And then I'm gonna open up the Epsom salts and put what I have left into the cylinder vase. And then I'm gonna add some of the Dollar Tree faux snow and that's kind of got some glittery look to it. I love the combination. I'm gonna mix them up together. And then I've got these little teeny balls of snow. <laughs> and I'm gonna add those also, just a little bit. And and I'm gonna mix those up too. I wanted it to look like all different kinds of consistencies of snow because that is how snow is. And now I'm gonna take the larger bottle brush tree that was from Dollar General. And then I'm gonna end up using only three of the little ones, even though you see four there. And then I've got these three ornaments, two glittery silver and one just regular silver. And I just think it looks so pretty. And I'm just creating this little snowscape. So I'm putting the first large tree in on the one side. Then I'm gonna add the little bit of glitter I have left. It's very little. And I just thought I'd put that on whatever didn't get glitter on it. And I just, it makes it look like it's glistening in the sun. And then I'm gonna flock all of the little trees and paint the bases white also because I want it to look like it's been snowing quite a bit in this little snowscape. Now I'm going to place my three little Christmas trees on the opposite side and I thought this was so cute but I felt like it just needed something else. So what I did was I found in my little wood cutouts a larger deer and then a little deer. And I had already painted that one for another project I didn't use. So I'm gonna take the burnt umber and I'm gonna paint both sides and then I'm gonna use a paper towel and wipe it off so it's almost like a stain. Now that's what I had done with the little deer you see there already. And when you wipe it off, it just leaves the perfect amount on there. Then I'm gonna take my white chalk paint and now I'm going to dry brush all over this deer. And then I will also wipe that off with a wet baby wipe because I wanna make sure that they look as similar as possible to each other. And I did add a little more white paint to the little ones so they would match better. Now I'm just gonna take them and place them in this snowscape. It's kind of like a mother deer and a baby deer and I just thought it was so sweet. You guys, I love this. The funny thing is it's so easy and it comes out absolutely beautiful. I hope you try this one. Got 
this adorable gnome wood cutout from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna take a nail file and I'm gonna go around all of the edges and then I'll also sand the front and back. I'm gonna use this flag colored red acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and I'm gonna go ahead and just paint like his hands and his suit red. And I'll show you when I finish with all of that. Hey, I am on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook if you'd like to find me over there, same name. And if I ever inspire you to create something, send me a picture over there. I would love that. Now he needs some black shoes and I'm gonna use a jot marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna color his shoes black. That was just so easy and it's less messy. And then I'm gonna outline his beard and I'm gonna use a finer point black marker to get into some of those littler crevices that are on the cutout just to make the little black borders. And there he is looking adorable. And then I'm gonna take some white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum, the linen white, and I'm gonna paint his beard, the pom-pom on his hat, and parts of his sleeves. And I'm gonna use my heat tool from Amazon to dry this quickly. I'm gonna mix a little red and white to make him a little pink nose and then add a little more white to it because I don't want it too pink, just to be kind of cute. And then I'll put a little white swish across it just to give it some dimension. I'm gonna use some pieces from a mop head and I'm gonna actually make his beard and the hair in the back of him 3D. I'm just gonna cut pieces to size and hot glue them down. And then off camera, I'm gonna give him a really good trim, but you'll just trim yours to whatever length and shape that you like. I kind of made mine come to a little point in the middle. And I'm just showing you, I did some on each side and then I started in the middle. That way it kind of flowed evenly on both sides. I didn't want one side to look different than the other. And there he is. Isn't he so cute? Now I'm going to take this adorable scrap of paper that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to trace the shape of his hat both sides because you know one goes one way one goes the other and I'm going to cut out the pieces to go over his hat. I know I painted it red but I just decided it would look cuter especially with a candy cane theme to do this particular scrap of paper. So I'm going to use my glue stick after I cut it out and I got the glue stick at the Dollar Tree. It's a great deal and then I'm literally just going to put it right on top and I'm going to to rub it down and then I'm going to sand around the edges to get a nice clean edge. Do you ever watch crafting videos while you're crafting? I know I do and in case you do I have created a mega playlist of a lot of my crafts so that you can watch them while you are crafting. So I've got the playlist down in my description box so I hope you'll go check it out. And on the front side I obviously had to make a cut for around his nose so that it would fit. And I'm just going to use a little spatula scraper instead of my brayer on this one because it's so small. And there he is with his hat on. He looks adorable. I've got these little mini candy canes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue one to each of his little mittens. Now he could actually fit on one of my tiered trays so that is kind of what I'm going with here. He'll either be right next to it or sitting right on it. cute little cutouts of like cutting boards. I got them on Amazon and I'm going to draw some lines to kind of differentiate where I'm going to paint in the red flag color by Apple Barrel and use the scrap of paper that you see right there. And so that's what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish the painting first so that it can dry and then I will use some of the glue stick and I will attach the scrap of paper and of course I will measure and cut as much as I need. This time I decided to put the glue stick right on the wood because I ended up having to do that with the other anyway. For some reason it just sticks better to that and then when you set the paper down it seems to stay. At least for me that's what happened. And then I'll use my scraper to make sure that it's on there nice and firm. And I'll take my little nail file again and I'll sand around the edges to get that clean edge. And you know I use the nail file on smaller things because it's so much easier to maneuver. And now I'm going to take a little bit of my white chalk paint. I'm just going to do the edges where the scrapbook paper was in white, where I did the other edges in red. And that really, to me, is a nice little touch. I've got this adorable twine that is red and white, just like Candy King. And I'm going to wrap it around a bunch of times on the handle and then cut off the end and hot glue that down just for a little extra touch. 
Then I'm going to take that same twine and I'm just going to make a border for where the paint meets the scrapbook paper. And so there's three places and I'm going to wrap it all the way around and hot glue it down. And I think that just gives it a very nice finish and it looks more polished that way and not kind of so unfinished. Now I have this little white mini rope. I'm putting that in the hole because I want it to be white instead of like a twine color. And then I used my Cricut Joy and I found a font that I liked and I just typed up Candy Cane's Five Cents and I'm going to go ahead and apply that with my transfer tape to the one side. And of course you can write this or use stickers. I almost forgot that little spot in the S there. I don't know how I missed that. And then on the other side, I made another one that says Candy Cane Lane. And I just go in and I go for whatever I like. I tend to design my own in Cricut Design Space, but you absolutely can do that. I am loving this one. I hope you guys like it too. Let me know. We love red trucks in our house, so I have this little ornament from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take it apart, take off the little string, take off the Christmas tree, and detach the Merry Christmas sign. And that way I'm just going to start off working with the truck. Now, of course, it's got that horrible glitter all over it, so I'm going to have to sand that. And did you know that little piece where the tires are actually comes off? I found that out by accident when I was doing this. That was kind of handy. So uh, not till just about now, right there is when I figured it out. So I was able to take my white chalk paint and paint around the tires. And then I'm gonna take my jot marker from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and draw the tires. And then I'm going to use an Arteza paint pen that is silver and I'm going to fill in the little hub caps. And then I will put back my little piece onto the truck. It just snaps right in. How fun is that? I'm going to get a bunch of my little candy canes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put them around the back and hot glue them. I want this to look like a truck carrying a load of candy canes. You know how they carry the pumpkins or the trees? Well, this time it's going to be carrying candy canes. So cute. And then I'm going to take that little Merry Christmas sign. I'm going to use the red paint marker, which is called Vermilion from Arteza. And I'm going to go over those letters because I've had this in a box for a while. So they were very faded and that just brought it right back to life. That was so easy. Just dried it real quick. And then on the back, I'm going to make some stripes for like candy cane stripes. Just, you know, if you see it from the back, so cute. And then I'm going to take my red and white candy cane stripe twine and I'm going to feed it through the little holes and tie it on to the truck. Now I tied it on, but then I end up gluing it because I didn't want it to be kind of movable. I wanted it to be more stationary because what I'm going to end up doing is putting this on a tear trace. I want it to be able to stand up. So I'm going to use two of the little tumbling tower blocks and lay them next to one another. And then I'm going to hot glue them together. And then I'm going to take that same red and white striped scrap of paper that I've been using and I'm going to cut out two pieces, one for each of the long sides, the longer wider sides, and I'm going to use my glue stick and attach that. Then I will sand around the edges like I always do just to get a nice clean finish. And then I'm going to take my red flag paint from Apple Barrel and I'm going to paint the two ends and around the edges and that will definitely finish it off. After the paint dries, I will hot glue this piece to the very back and it will also give me a way for this little guy to stand up on a tear tray or anywhere that I decide to put it. Guys, I love this one. I just love little red trucks. Do you? This DIY, I'm going to use this little rolling pin, a mini rolling pin that I got on Amazon. It came like a pack of six or eight, really good price. I'm going to use that flag colored paint again from Apple Barrel and I'm going to paint the whole center part of the rolling pin. Once that dries, I'm going to use my white chalk paint and I'm going to paint both of the ends. And then I'm going to use my red and white twine and I'm going to put it around where the two colors of paint meet with some hot glue on both sides. 
If you are liking anything in my video, please hit that like button. I mean, right now would be great and I would really appreciate it. Then I'm going to take my twine again and I'm going to make two little teeny shoestring bows and then I'll cut off the ends and I will hot glue them to both ends of the rolling pin where the pieces of twine met so that you won't even see that seam. I just think this is adorable. Then I used my Cricut Joy and I printed out the words candy canes in a font that I liked. And again, you can use stickers, you can write this, whatever you want. And I just think this is adorable. So easy and it's going to go on my tiered tray. For this DIY, I'm going to use this shot glass from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint the inside and the outside completely with my Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint. And it takes several coats. Now I've heard that you should put Mod Podge on first before painting glass, but I didn't this time and it did work out okay, so maybe it would have taken less coats. Then I'm going to take this red and white poly type twine from the automotive section at Dollar Tree. I don't know how else to say that. I'm going to separate the red and I'm going to start hot gluing it like kind of at the top on the inside and just slowly wrap it around gluing every so often. And then when I finish one round, I'm going to take another piece and move over a little bit and start at the top again. And I'm going to do that three times so I get a really good coverage. And I'm basically creating some candy cane stripes on this little shot glass, which is now going to be just a little holder for a three-tier tray. And there it is with all three rounds. I think it's so cute, super easy, you guys, super easy. And then I'm gonna take these larger candy canes from the Dollar Tree and put some in there and that's it. It's done and I love it. I love adding these cute little things to my tier trays. Thank you so much for watching my video. I truly appreciate it. And I want you to know that you are a blessing to me. If you enjoyed this video, I've got more videos on the screen. Be sure to click one of them next and I'll see you there. Bye. What fun it is to ride